This is street beef scrap, y'all. We ain't got a hat hog. Sasquatch back, y'all. We flipping like a flash car. Guns down, gloves up, and shut up. That part. Guns down, gloves up, and shut up. That part. Street beef scrap, y'all. We ain't got a hat hog. Sasquatch back, y'all. We flipping like a flash car. Guns down, gloves up, and shut up. That part. Guns down, gloves up, and shut up. That part. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Scrap Talk Season 2, Episode 4. I'm your host, Fire Chicken, with. Viking Warrior, LB3, Crazy Life, Crazy All Life. Right. Oh yeah, how you guys doing tonight? I'm doing great, Black. bro. Doing pretty good. Like, I'm struggling, a, but you know that's life. Yeah, we got a good episode uh, lined up for everybody. Uh, as you may or may not have seen, we have Stephen Wonderboy Thompson lined up to come on to Scrap Talk a little bit later. Uh, we got our list of things that we go through. We're going to talk about some different stuff. And um, um, I, I guess we can just get right into it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Let's go. Let's so go. That... All right. So we're we going to start about our weekend. Yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. Let's do a check in. Let's do a check in. How's let's everybody doing? So, yeah. Uh, how y'all doing, man? I'm Vike Warrior, if y'all don't know. Um, shout out to everybody watching right now. Shout out to everybody that's not watching that, you know, support us. We all love y'all and appreciate the support. Um, honestly, man, we went to BKFC trials out in uh, Portland, Oregon at the uh, American Top Team um, a gym out there. And it was a pretty dope, dope experience, man. We had a good turnout. Well, it was like 10 of us out there. Yeah, huh, Steve. Steve was out there support. You know, we got our scrapyard shirts. You know what I'm saying? We was out there killing it. You all my hair. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I just want to tap in because I didn't get to go, but I just wanted to say to all of you guys that went out there and did that, man. I'm so proud of you guys, and I and I wish that you guys all the best of of the results of maybe where this thing can go. I can't wait to see what happens with some of the scrapyard fighters in the respect of. Uh, bare knuckle man i'm excited you know i heard some guys did really really well and uh most mostly you know all of our guys for that sake so you know i know fire chicken had mentioned some things to me one of those things that he said is he wished he would have tried out <laughs> I'm, yeah <laughs> man i i don't think there's anything wrong with trying out like you don't necessarily have to say you're gonna be a bkfc fighter i i think what it is it's like if, if you can make it through the tryout yes go through the test you know, because test, you're testing yourself. Yeah. You don't know who and you that's, are. And that's what you I know, learned like, from experience. You know, it was pretty dope. And then having all the group of guys, you know, we're all different uh, fighters. We all have different levels. You know what I'm saying? And for all of us to go out there and not and give it all, all give it all, all, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I noticed out of all these guys, you know, it was a. Uh, it was a good three hour session. You know, we had we the go. first hour, first hour was cardio, second hour was more mid bag work, and then the third one was sparring. And it was just, you know, if for, for most guys that, you know, don't commit to a gym, they never really experience that type of thing. You know, for mm -hmm. for those guys that come out there from the scrapyard and some of them never even committed to a gym before. And they went through the ringer and they pushed themselves and they, you know, committed to it and they, you know, pushed themselves and went through it. They got, they and, got to experience what it was really like. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and, that's, and that's dope because that opportunity, and like you said, we talk so much about how training should be or how intense, you know, things could go or maybe some of the training that people aren't doing. And for some of those guys that went through that, they first, they got a first, firsthand, you know, experience. So, I think that was pretty awesome. And, and it was great that you guys showed the videos um, of the training. And, and I was at, we were all, I think those that watched were able to see, you know, you and Flex and Lorania and, you know, Guanaco. I mean, just so many guys just really putting in the work and it was cool to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think it was cool that they let us film because like, I don't think all the tryouts are the same everywhere you go. So you could go to, you could go over on the East coast or wherever and, and they might not let you film, but the gym that we went to, they were okay with it. BKFC didn't really seem to care. And honestly, like, I don't see the issue with it. You know, like we want to get, 
we want to showcase how our guys are doing and take some video for them to remember because it is an experience for them. But the the trip itself, the 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 test, um, it I think it really showed people like what they need to pick up on, and you also see the areas yeah. that that they're most wanting to uh, focus on watching, you know, obviously they want to see your form. They want to see your cardio. Um, they want to see your conditioning. They want to see your mitt work. And then the sparring. Um, I did just see a, a thing up here, a question, was it hard sparring? It was, but it also kind of depended on your opponent. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. some people went pretty hard. They don't let it get too hard because the guy's running it like Chris Lytle. He's like, Hey, tone it down a little bit. But at the yeah. same time, I did see some people that were like really kind of soft sparring. Um, but it's a mix. You don't know who you're gonna who you're gonna spar. You you might spar somebody like that's just starting out, or you might spar um, like La Rania got a Bellator Pro that's had a he he's got like fifteen fights and he's got a winning record. And I'm I'm gonna say this man, La Rania did an excellent job taking on that he stayed nice and calm and you guys looked really good too dude you yeah. you you fought some tough guys in yours you got to go against flex you know mm -hmm. like really, really and, proud and, of everybody yeah i agree and, and like touch base on what you were saying earlier like with the spawn honestly like it's bare knuckles so you have to work on your clinch work it's not just boxing so it's not about mm -hmm. going in there and just working your boxing like i felt like i did good work in the clinch i was kind of focused on that a little too much i feel like i should have focused more on my head work and, and stuff but at the end of the day that's why i'm glad steve took that video and stuff because it, it is something that you could go and look at and see you know even if it's just spawn you just look at things, you know, that you can improve when it comes to bare knuckle. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's what I like. And, and for all of us, it felt like it was everybody's new experience. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a new sport and yeah. people are really trying to get comfortable with it because it was a good mix of pros and amateurs in there. It, you know what I'm saying? When they had at the end, they split it up with pros and amateurs. There was a it was like an equal amount. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pros and amateurs so it felt like everybody got mixed mixed you know what i'm saying spawn with pros and, and being able to you know what i'm saying get that feel of different type of levels you know what i'm saying without having to compete you know what i'm saying against them it's more just hard spawning and let them you know what i'm saying get some feel yeah. you know I do know yeah, was, was the thing that benefit and a real nice thing about it too to, to 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 just tap a little bit on it. Again, my experience not being here, but I wish I could have been just just on a simple fact that you guys were all able to just also be together as as scrapyard representatives. You know, I mean, just hanging with each other away from the yard, doing these type of events away from the yard draws the brotherhood closer, right? It, it's yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um. I also like. Shout out to Buddy V. I I got a hold of him and I had him make the shirts for us and everything. And yeah, uh, shout out Buddy. Pretty quick. Um, he, his turnaround on it was pretty quick. Um, he gave appreciate me you, thing. buddy. Yeah, pretty no, good price on the shirt. Thing. So you know, everybody, pretty much everybody showed up that I made a shirt for, had a shirt made for, which was cool. And then nice. hostility, she wasn't able to make it, but her coach was there, so I did give her shirt to her coach. Oh, she, what happened only, with her? She's already signed to BKFC, so she was just gonna go and and gonna go Support. through the tryout again for Let's experience. Okay. But like, she's not required to do that. There were some people there that were in the tryouts that they had already they already have contracts, but they just want to like I don't know maybe they want to keep showcasing what they can do. Um, also, I wanted to bring up I don't know if you guys noticed it or not, but you know everybody that from the scrapyard for the most part brought like sixteen ounce gloves. Maybe some people brought some twelves. I was looking at some of the gloves some of the people were yeah, using out there. They were they, they were using like eight ounce and ten ounce gloves. The one dude that we was sparring with, the dude that was clinching the most, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He had the puffies on, remember? And he was yeah. gonna go in there and spar with the puffies. And the other dude that was bar with him was his homeboy or whatever. And he was like, Hey man, uh <laughs> if you're gonna spar with me, you gotta put some boxing gloves on. And he was like, All right, uh He's like, I ain't got none, but and then the dude was like, I got extra. Here you go. 
Like, you ain't about to hit me with those puffies. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I, you know, that's bit that's part that's how you really like train with bare knuckle. I feel like puffies is the best way to go. You know? Puffies yeah. is, is you know how you condition your face for getting punched like that. You know what I'm saying? Without cutting your shit and really getting fucked up, you know? That's what they use in the amateur part of BKFC. So there's an amateur yeah. division if you get picked for that. You're basically using a little bit a little bit larger MMA gloves, but it's to teach you to be able to clinch and, and work that whole getting getting you ready for it. So yeah. they put an amateur oh, yeah, division together to try to build like a fighter pool so that um, when they want to say, hey, that guy's ready, they can pull him out and put him in a show. Thanks. Cool. Well, let's keep moving on on to, uh, you know, intro, right? Um, yep. LB3 yep. here, you know, Pichotto, clothing company. You know. to, before that, before that, I want to give Heart of Fire a shout out <laughs> for this. It's my bad, my bad. But anyway, I'm trying to get hard shout I'm trying to get hard if I a shout out for the trophy they gave me. Like the light. Yeah. Anyways, like shout out hard if I shout out for that. Yeah, like, when you were doing if your you haven't subscribed, <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah, if you, if you haven't doing... subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to Harder Fight, you need to subscribe there amazing channel they're amazing people like they, they help you out they're making good content they're going places yes and of course that's good of course follow me like because like yeah i can't see some you shit. might as well do, do your intro bro <laughs> do your intro you know what it is i'm crazy legs but <laughs> i i do the crazy shit yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah hit crazy. the like button. <laughs> <laughs> hit like button. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Yeah, for real. All right, well, man. It's all you, my dude. It's all good, you guys. LB3, Limby Hicks, Pichotto, <laughs> Team Benavides, uh, Cleveland High School, uh, Pro Clean Northwest. Everybody, shout out to them. You know, Fire Chicken, the Scrap Yard, and, and everybody else. You know, um, yeah, LB3. You know, you guys all know. Uh, I, I do, do everything. everything. I do everything, <laughs> anything, anybody want me to do. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. Uh, Lynch the man, for real. <laughs> what about you, Fire Chicken? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, you know, like, going through those tryouts and everything and watching you guys, like... I, 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 Why didn't I, you try I, it with them? I wasn't... Because I haven't been working out and stuff, and... and Honestly, like beforehand, I didn't realize that like you could just do that. And then I, I guess experiencing it firsthand, I have a different perspective on it. So I think next time I'm going to just get ready for it a little bit. And um, okay. I mean, I could have done it, but like the, the cardio. It, it definitely it, it definitely takes some conditioning, man. I'm telling you. Because, you know, I got some cardio, but that's just what it wasn't the same cardio. It's just like. A hard, hard day of, of doubles in training. If you if you go to a gym and get smoked, that's like how it was, you know, getting smoked. And then you have to spar afterwards. Yeah. Um, I did want to really quick shout out everybody that made it out to the tryouts. So of course we had uh, myself, old man Mike Joe, Warrior, <laughs> Flex, La Arena, uh, El Guanaco, Spider Monkey, John Eds thirty three. The humble oh, one, sure. nutty, bust the nutting, and buddy V. We yeah. actually didn't know that um, humble one was going to show up uh, at all. He just like popped up, he just popped up. But hey, yeah, he lives like right close to there anyway, so that's that's probably yeah. why. But um, so yeah, um, shout out to you guys. Uh, we took some cool pictures. I made a I made a special video for everybody. So, um, you know, it's a it's a private video on YouTube, but uh, I have links of it everywhere, so you can watch it. Um, I just didn't post it public, so. And none of our guys threw up in the ring or none of that. Somebody nope. else did, but none of our guys. I was proud of that, you know. Nobody, nobody quit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody went on their shield, you know. Even buddy. They, they, yeah, he he went on his shield. He didn't. He didn't. He went all three rounds. There was only yeah, two guys that 
that got taken out of the third round, but that wasn't their choice. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, what I yeah, like. Yeah. It wasn't their choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They got told, hey, hey, you had enough. Come on. Yeah, and then <laughs> got to go in there and box, box for him. Yeah, twice. Yeah, I man. liked it. Yeah. That would be fun. That, I, man, that it. was a good trade-off. It was good. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was cool. Yeah. What's dude, up, man? How good. you been, Welcome bro? Back. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, you switched places. No, it's all good. I hey, have you know, hey, uh, hey. my parents. My parents are actually place, from bro. out of town. They um they're from Texas, so they they're visiting. They're here right now. Uh, we get ready to have dinner and staying while well, I'm making dinner for them. So trying to multitask. Uh, they came up. My 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 auntie. Um, my mom's sister is uh not doing well. She's she's gone in a hospice where you know she's at the final stages of her life and you know getting ready for her home going. So my mom came up and we got family and. We just got to deal with it as it comes, you know, the Lord, Lord, Lord has his way of doing things. And, you know, I thank God for all things, even things that don't are you know, out of our control. And, you know, so, you know, I can go on and on about that. But, you know, we all deal with things and it, it's all part of the process. So all we got to do is keep trusting the process, do our part, stay positive as we can and uplift those that need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's, really, right. that's really all I got really going on right now. Well, well you know, of course, track season. You know, you know, track season's going on right now, and yeah. the kids are getting going. So I'm doing high jump and hurdles at at Chief Self High School, and still trying to get through football meetings and coaches meetings, and so prep for the off season. So always working, always coaching. Uh, actually, just got a hit up today from uh from Hunter from Real Lion, I did who's too. Uh, going through some things, and uh, he's 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 advancing at the Benavides Boxing Gym. They wanted to cut down to, I think, 175, between 175 and 180, 85. Um, he did some sparring with Pachero, who's a, a big guy, heavyweight. He put in the work. And uh, and I think they're just ready to see him kind of lose a little weight because of his height. Must fit his build a little bit better. And they're ready to do some big things with him. Um, so shout out to, to Real Lion. But uh, he shout called me Real today. Real Lion, my BFF. Yeah. I'm a I'm impressed. He's he's really taking it to the next level with his dedication and yeah. really showing that he's serious about this opportunity that he's got. So, right, yeah, he's a good fighter. Right, right, right. He goes by. So, yeah. But other than that, uh, let's keep going on to our stuff because we want to get in as much as we can before our our guest shows up, so that we don't yeah, have yeah. a long show. I don't know, Viking. You normally have to go and pick up your, your kids, right? That today? Oh uh, yeah, we we chilling today. We chill. Cool. Okay. Good deal. Good you, deal. You won't leave early. So, let's so uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the the yard and what's new in the yard and what's going on and how the how the uh you know what's coming up what's what's happening you know what's coming up what's new. Okay, um, so we did just have an event a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know we'll I think we're going to talk about that in a minute, but um, our next event is on four twenty. So take that how you want to take it but it's a 420 event uh coincidentally and I'm going to be so we got signups going like on our <laughs> facebook group so if, you, if you're interested in signing up and want to fight at the at the scrapyard you go to our facebook group you find the sign up post and you read everything and you put the information down it's not yes. that difficult guys um, yes um so we got fights on 420 525 622 and 720 which was which is our four-year anniversary um, I was talking today. I had a fighter get a hold of me, and it's kind of a kind of a call out B fight. Um, not a B fight, but we got um, two people that I don't know when they're going to do it, but I'm trying to trying to set a date for it. But I got Terrifier and Ryu Senin are wanting to fight each other, and they've agreed to kickboxing. So hey. look for that in the future. Hey, I like yeah. it. I like it. He's been he's been uh, winning that fight for like a whole last year now. Uh yeah, but Terrifier wanted it with like four ounce MMA gloves <laughs> and stuff, and uh, I think that they just kind of have gone back and forth with it a few times, and like yeah. now they're like, okay, we're, we'll just do it with regular boxing gloves and and do kickboxing. But nice, uh, yeah. I, I, I honestly like, like them both. I like them both. Yeah, like I, I, I want to like. Go ahead. Oh, good. Go ahead. Like I want to say Ryu's gonna win because like it's kickboxing, but like I haven't seen Terrifier for a while, so like you never know how hard he's been training. 
Hey, they both my boys. I fuck with both of them, but you know, I'm not gonna pick. I'm a, I'm gonna plead the fifth. I'm gonna plead the fifth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a good fight, no matter what. We'll just say that. Yes. It's, gonna, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a dope fight. Rounds. It has to be five rounds. It has to be five rounds. I fuck. So I, 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 hey, maybe you know. Maybe I feel like it's gonna that. be a good fight. Yeah, I don't want to pick a winner. I want. I want to just see it. You know, yeah, it's one of those ones that can go either way, right? Yeah, right. you don't so really want to pick a winner. Somebody, you got power. Better. You got power versus technical. You know what I'm saying? You got technique yeah. versus power. So, you know that. So it can go either way. Yeah. 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 Real got some power in him too. Like he's not just technical. Oh, of course, he's a heavyweight, motherfucker. He better have yeah. power. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm not doubting his power, but I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. You know, you got somebody yeah, yeah, that sure. been practicing martial arts for a very long time, and then somebody yeah. that's a wrestler that transitioned to, you know, boxing, kickboxing, like, you know like what I'm saying, MMA. I like what about how, yeah, yeah. you know, he's going to keep, Ryu keeps his hands a little low, which is which is very true, but also you got to look at the kicking, right, that kicking aspect. Uh, Terrifier could hit him because he's strong. If he's keeping his hands low, yeah. might catch him with one, and then it's a wrap. Facts. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. A question That's for Viking saying. Warrior. Uh, um, it's from Ali Viking. Have you trained anything other than boxing? Um, yeah, of course. I know. Yeah, I, I oh, I started. I started MMA. Yeah, it's 2009. I started MMA. I had 21 sanctioned MMA fights, and then I stopped in 2011 because I got a knee injury. And then I went back into Muay Thai and kickboxing. I went 5-0 and in both of those. And then I went into boxing. So at the end of the day, I, I feel like I'm a, well, I'm a well-rounded martial artist. You know, I need to work on some things, you know, and I want to keep improving my martial arts skills. But I try to do everything. So I recommend doing everything to everybody else, too. Don't be just stuck in one, you know, in one, yeah. one art, you know. Martial arts yeah. is a... Is a big abundance, you know, to to learn. There's a lot. There's a lot to learn right. when it comes to martial arts. So, boxing is just a piece of it. Right. Well, what do you got, Steve? We got anything else coming up at the yard? Any more um, news? Oh well, I'm looking for the May 25th. The May 25th, then it's my birthday. I'm trying to do some shit. Oh, oh that's nice. nice. That's good to know. Does yeah. that mean you're He's fighting fight. on your birthday? Because I fought on my birthday, so. Like, we'll see. Cause I have a fight on 11th, so we'll see how I'm feeling after that. Okay. Yeah. I have a couple yeah. after fights on the way. I have to train, lose weight, do all the bullshit. But yeah, yeah, I'm down to yeah. If you, if you, if you, if you train your ass off, you'll be there. So just train, and then commit. Yeah. That's all. Like I'm training. I'm training on the list. It's just like. After my fight, like I don't know how I'm feeling because, like, like my last fight, like it took me at least like two months to like heal from that shit. Lights yeah, out. Yeah, I feel. three times an event. He's like, not crazy, like his his body is. I just, I, I just said that. I, he didn't really. This guy did twenty twenty year old. Like I don't <laughs> yeah. have that. I don't have that energy no more. I wish I did, but no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel it. I, I'm, I'm old. I'm not old. Um, we're looking for some female fighters for the scrapyard. Uh, we got more and more signing up 160 and 135. Um, we're looking for entry level, meaning like level one, uh, level zero, level one. So if there's any females that, that want to sign up and just get in there and, and have some fun, uh, get, get at us on Instagram or Facebook or in the group or whatever. Right yeah, let's build right that on. that female division up. Yeah, like nice. building it slowly, slowly building. I like how it's come. No come. It's, it's actually it's actually been a light. It's been nice to see yeah. what we do have, and it's slowly yeah. coming together. It brings the hype a little bit. I think you're gonna. It's just gonna slowly keep growing. So we just gotta keep persistent with the invites, and I, it's gonna happen. So really good stuff. Yeah. I was hoping hostility like stick with us a little bit longer, like got a few more fights in, but like we could have had more, but we couldn't find an opponent for. Her. 
Yeah, true, true. That's like the hard part. Like, you know, finding yeah. like a decent girl fighter. And like the girls that were like, how you do train, like wasn't their skill, like wasn't at her um, weight class. We only got her one fight, really. She So the first fight was uh, not your average girl. And we, we found that and we made that matchup. But the second fight, like we didn't even make. So her opponent messaged me on Instagram and said, I want to fight her. And I said, you know, she's pretty experienced, right? She says, oh, I don't care. I, I, I think I can take her. And um, I said, okay, I'll set it up. And then she said, as you see, lie. that's how it went. But I tried to find her fights. Probably at least one other event after that, maybe two. And, you yeah. know, like, she's not going to come over here all the way from Eastern Washington. Um, yeah, for maybe. Like, for maybe, it. right, yeah. Someone um, asked about tips, and uh, we're going to get back to that because that is a portion of our – That is, yeah. Minute. We're going to go into two-minute training tips uh, with fire chicken and Viking Warrior. They're going to give you guys a little bit of advice uh, on some training. So we'll go into that in a few. Uh, currently, right now, I think we're going to go over – the recap from the last fight event and some of the controversies that might happen. You guys want to lean into that? That's a fire chicken. I mean, that's a Viking warrior and crazy legs. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, so anything you want to bring up? That we, <laughs> <laughs> you, you said you didn't remember a whole lot from that event. So yeah, of course, just Steve. But I remember um, the fucking, um, I don't know. Okay, you, yeah, I'll pick you off. You go. I got all the fights in front remember? of me. That's why. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's kind of Tell me the name. So, Every, I'll like, tell you I'll just read some of them, but like Chongo versus Black Panther, that was a Masters that, Division title fight. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I want to talk about first. Yeah. So go, ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Keep go ahead. telling us with auto. Go ahead. I got, um, I'm just, I got uh, Maliko Goon versus oh, Dynamic Duran. Um, I had the big guys preach versus heavyweight, Razor versus Lights Out, the Rim, okay, Re the Rim Reaper <laughs> versus O, Sano versus Ka the Kaiju, Snowplow versus No All Limit, right. Solo versus the Comedian. I got um, Hollywood, Hollywood versus El Guanaco. I got. I told him I was doing this. Sandman versus Boars, as uh, Soul versus Sand. And those are the main ones. The, the other ones may have been like first timers that that I didn't mention. Yeah. So let's jump into that Black Panther one. So at first I didn't know what happened to uh, you know what I'm saying because I wasn't I wasn't able to be at the event, but I saw it on the live, so I was seeing it and I was like, what happened? But I guess he had a headbutt, right? He so he had a gas. We yeah. didn't see it when yeah. it happened, but yeah. I was able to go through the footage afterwards and see that it, it, it I mean, obviously it's not like, but what round intentionally done that, but yeah, nobody yeah. said that, but, but what round did it happen? It happened in the first, first round and yeah, we like were first three seconds, just about. get it patched back up. But, um, round two came around and Chongo got, he got a flurry and he, took a knee, I think, and then he just didn't want to continue after that. But I mean it had started bleeding again and Yeah. Yeah. Like that, and after that cut his like his will to fight was just gone. Yeah, see. yeah. It was a it was a pretty bad cut, but um it was more frustration to where he was more he he didn't feel like he didn't feel himself. So he was he didn't feel confident with himself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically, it was like how Ryan Garcia did it against Tank. He just took a fucking knee. He was like, fuck this fight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's just, that's how I feel like what happened in that fight. You know? That's, that's he what was like, when I grappled Pappas, it's like I got frustrated and I said, fuck this match. And I was like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it happens like that. <laughs> And that's, and that's what it looked like, too. I mean, after the headbutter, you really couldn't see it too well, but it looked like during the, during the live feed that you're like, that's what happens. He was like, I'm done. I'm, yeah. There's no, no yeah. point. Yeah. I I hope Chongo doesn't take it too okay. bad. You know, like, he's a good I hope he fights again. Yeah, I hope yeah, he fights sure. again, yeah. man. You know? Yeah, we need it's, him coming back. Yeah, for real. He signed He's talking about he don't want to, but, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. let's go into that razor lights out. 
Fuck I'm talking about solo like, after. Yeah, Razor no, versus no, Lights Out. No, I'm talking about solo. I like that Razor fight. Lights Out. Who? Yeah, yeah. so that was kind of um, Razor challenging himself. You know, he obviously knew that Lights Out had way more experience, but <laughs> uh, I, I think it was good for him to see what see what the difference was between, you know, a lot of fights versus only a couple Thanks. For real. The experience... Was, like I said, like, Go ahead. Like I said, like, like I said, um, last episode, Razor was just fighting scared. Like, yeah, the, the throwing, experience like, level. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he wasn't throwing hard at all. Like, yeah, he was, like, he was throwing like, like 10%. Was going hard. Yeah, the experience level definitely showed. You know, he wasn't yeah. ready. He wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> but lights but out he did it. actually throw a lot of volume. He thought more. He threw more. I think that's what lights out yeah. did. He brought out more volume in. Yeah. In, 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 but it, you're right. There was no hard shot, so it really, it really wasn't effective. But yeah, growing, I would say the same thing with the Hollywood fight. What was that's his name? Yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. Verse, uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like he wasn't ready for that fight neither. You know, but he showed more improvement. He showed improvement, definitely. Hollywood's been working on getting his boxing game right, and one of the biggest things was a lot of people saw him throwing a lot of power, but a lot of his previous fights, I think, were coming from his natural ability of of power punching. It wasn't technical, and there wasn't footwork. In this fight, he was moving more. He was using his footwork because that's what he's training for right now. So he's, his yeah. muscle memory is starting to starting to show, but it took a bit away from I think his his level of aggression, like really trying to counter punch. So this one there wasn't much of that from him. I don't think. I just look. I thought it was in and out, lots of movement. Him trying his best to use the jab, um, and that's what a lot of beginning boxers are really taught: how to move, how to have a little defense, and how to work off the jab. And yeah, that's what he was trying to do. But Guanaco's a different breed, and. A little, a little tad bit more experienced and and I think at the same time has pretty much equal if not more power. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to answer this really quick. Somebody's asked when Wonder Boy is coming on. So Wonder Boy had practice and he was getting off his practice like right at the same time that Scrap Talk was starting. So that's kind of why we're going through all of our stuff right now first yeah. and, um, and then when he comes on uh, we'll we'll be ready for him but I've been talking to him for the last, I don't know, couple weeks about it. He messaged me yesterday. He shared it on his story today. So we're good to go on that. Sorry to cut you off there. I just wanted to answer that. No, that was good. We got we we have a lot of time sometimes when we're we're doing our episodes and we should make it a little bit more of a point to 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 answer some of the questions because a lot of people tap it in and and our and you viewers are very important to us. So I want to make sure that we do that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But yeah, let's talk about Soul versus Sandman fight. Like that was a that was a, a really good that was a really good kickboxing fight. Like I'm not yeah. sure if it was more tired or not, but yeah. Like they were both showing like perfect technique. They were both throwing flashy kicks for the for the gram. Some nut shots, like it was a back and forth fight. Like it was a really it was good so fight. bad for Souls package. Yeah, like it was it, it was a clean fight. hit. It was a clean hit. He wasn't wearing a cup, like it, it was that. Yeah, that's his fault. He needs to wear a cup. I no, he said he was wearing one. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. It just hit okay. hard, like, and it. Yeah, it that dude could weird. kick hard, man. That that yeah. dude had the power, you know. And I do agree with the decision to take a point away. I know it wasn't intentional, but man, that was a rear back and throw that kick when his leg was up in the air like that. I was like, ah. It was such a such a hard shot in such an open area like that, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's always nice to see more kickboxers. Like, there's too many boxers and MMA fighters out there. Like, we need some more kickers. So, like, it's nice to see some more Thanks. pop up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, that that was a uh, definitely one of the best matches we had of the day. Um, I'm not picking and choosing fights based on like how good they were before I edit them. I'm just doing them kind of random. So, you know, like towards the end of the month, you might see like our best fight show up. Like it just whenever. So um, I'll get to that one uh, maybe here in the next few days, but uh, yeah, that way everybody else can see what we're talking about. 
Um, right. Solo versus Comedian. I know you guys were already talking about it. No, I was talking about <laughs> yep. Solo. He Solo. Like, I don't know that fight. That fight was funny. Happened. I liked it. It was funny. It was it was definitely entertaining. It was an entertaining fight, you know. Yeah, like he had someone who solo. I mean, solo finally fought someone who had, had matches energy of like just craziness. Uh, <laughs> someone finally yelled you know. back at him. You know, I I will say yeah. that that solo was doing some stuff in this fight that I've never seen him do before. So for one. He actually looked a little lighter on his feet. Um, he yeah. didn't fall down one yeah, time. Yeah, he never fell. I, I remember that. Yeah, he never and fell one. He was okay. fainting shots. Like he would go like because yeah. like, he's been working with um with Gaio and he trained him up for this fight, dropped a little bit of weight, and just okay. you know, got him ready for it. But I gotta give credit to the comedian, the com- the comedian. Um he landed a couple good shots on solo and and it looked like Solo was going to go down. Like, he wobbled him. Mm. Yeah, I noticed that. He caught him with a good-ass hook. Had had him shaking a little bit. Yep. <laughs> I was like, okay. But well, Solo's a champ. He, t- he, t- he kept talking shit. Like, yeah. ah! He knocking out Solo. <laughs> he ain't falling. Uh, man, tough. His throw. Tough motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But Canadian didn't try to pursue it though. He jumped back and was waiting. You know what I'm saying? He let him scream and shit. Like yeah, so, you gotta jump back on him. Yeah, but I've hit, to, I've hit the mix so, with Solo when he's punching, and he's <laughs> he's got a lot of power too. <laughs> yeah. So there was some shots there that he hit him with. He hit comedian with. I was also thinking, whoa. <laughs> yeah, he wobbled comedian too. They both were rocked in that fight. Yeah. You know, like that was a really good back to back fight. But uh, I liked how it was more of a boxing, like comedian stuck to boxing, and Solo was more kicking, you know, kickboxing type, you know. Well, you call it that, but it's crazy. He's it's like a drunken like fighting, is. like he got a drunken fighter style. <laughs> he likes thing? to hit without looking. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's his sister move. He's backstroking. <laughs> yeah, I got caught with one of those stupid shots. I remember. <laughs> What's the coming? coming? It was too late. Yeah. For real. Well, no, you know, like I met, we're on a I recap. met one of comedian's friends. I'm sorry, my bad. I met one what? of the comedian's friends last Saturday. And like I believe he signed up for this upcoming event. Like he's a pretty good he's a pretty good boxer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you know who it was? Uh, what his name is? Was it the guy that was in his corner? I believe so. I, I he's been in he's been in his corner. He was in his corner when I fought him, and I always wondered, like, you know, how much experience does that guy got? Yeah. Broken, broken box. Like he got some good ass combos because I sparred him and I sparred him at Wade last weekend. Like he got some good ass combos. <laughs> nice. Like, well, I for that. like comedian actually knows some good ass. Community actually knows some good fighters. I was gonna, I was just gonna tap in and say, you know, about since we're on the recap from this last event, uh, last last um, episode, Viking Warrior had kind of the fighter, the fight pick of the event. Did you have one for this past event? Uh, honestly, uh, the, the fighter that I feel like uh, did the best was uh, what's his name? Um, that fought. Uh, Ken- Kenshi, that's the dude I picked. The dude that got knocked out. Um, oh, Sano. What's his name? Yeah. Sano. Sano. Yeah. Sano. 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 You know, I feel like Sano deserve you know the 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 crown for this uh for this event, and you know he definitely came and showed out. You know he made a name for himself, so so hopefully he can keep it up. Right. 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 Well, good deal. I wanted to make sure you got that opportunity to kind of have your kick in. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate hey, it. For you. <laughs> yeah, lights out. Like, I'm yeah. like, lights out did good, but that wasn't my bet, you know. Yeah, that wasn't, yeah. That wasn't the one. <laughs> well, uh, as we move, the girl just trying to put a smile on my man's face. <laughs> well, uh, where else is the homie? Where else the homie? You already know. 
So oh, what about what did you guys think of that Maliko goon fight? Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, that was and like Stockley's, Stockley's losing so much weight. Like it's it's pretty amazing to see. One fifty five or looking, um Yeah, he's looking I'm trying, get, I'm trying to get lights out to fight him. <laughs> nah, he yeah. won't. He won't. Nah, he will. He will. He won't. He will. I, he I won't. feel like he will. I feel like he will. It would be he's good. I would fight. like to see it. He's I would like to see that it. Whole ass fight. Of course, like he did for me. Like he did in yeah. that one minute against me. He was like not trying to engage. He was like, no, nah, yeah. fuck that. <laughs> like I'm in here, but no, I'm going back up. Uh, I'm going to survive. He's not, he's not I'm going to survive. <laughs> yeah, uh, for real. Ma Rainia might, might be a good, good one for that. Yeah, man, you yeah. should you definitely yeah, sure. throw it at him. I don't know if uh, he'll take it, but I hope he would. I, I, you know, he he should. That'd be a good challenge for him. Um, Rim Reaper, that might be another one too that that could potentially be. Um, like he had a pretty good showing. I put that fight out. Oh yeah. No, that fight comes out tomorrow. But um, he's the one that fought Gabe, I believe. Maybe okay. was it? I don't know. I think it was. I thought he fought Gabe. Oh, Len's not here. Okay. No. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Len's the weak link. Today. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just I just got food on, so it's all done. You know, trying to multitask here, but sorry, guys. But yeah, that Maliko goon though. <laughs> Come on back to that. Yeah. I missed yeah. a little bit, but but it was good. Nah, that's cool. I get excited yeah. when I see Malik fighting and uh. He's always trying to look out for that knockout. What yeah. you what you what you think of him fighting uh Loren uh Lorena? Nah. You think that'd be a good fight? No. I do. I would. I don't. Yeah, okay. I think I'm down. I'm down for it. Based on what I yeah. see seen La Reina doing that sparring it against that pro, like yeah. I, I think he did. I think he's there. He's got to be confident in himself. I, I don't. I'm not saying no because I don't think Lorania can handle things. I just think that you have two different fighters. You got a fighter who's on his toes a lot, who's who fights tall and high, and he's going to try and use his range. And then you're going to have a fighter that likes to get inside. And I think those power body shots, if Lorania doesn't figure out how to stay moving, that can affect him in a major way. Um, so. Otherwise, I think I think I think it, it could go either way, but I just the just the look of the fight sometimes I don't know. It's yeah. the bombs. It's the bombs for me. It's the bombs. Like I know how Lorraine, you know, uh spars and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, he's he's technical, he's smooth, he he he'll be able to handle it. But Maybe five rounds might be too much, or maybe three. I don't know if it's three rounds now, right? So maybe, yeah. may, maybe it's because it's three rounds, I think you know what I'm saying he might be able to last. You feel me? Because like I, I feel like his his jab, he he's pretty good at cutting off people's jabs. So I feel like he will cut off Ogun's jab. So with Ogun's jab cut off. All he would really have is the big shots. You know what I'm saying? And maybe the body, if he throws body, you know what I'm saying, first, you know, to set up the head shots, that would be beneficial for him. But, you know, if he's going jab overhand, I don't think it would hit land too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I think I it's great, it would be, I think it'd be really hard for Lorania to to connect with the 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 power shots. On, yeah. on on Malik, but other than that, uh, you're right. He's going to keep him away. He's going to fight the distance, and we're going to hope that he could connect with the straight or a hook in in between. Um, but being that Malik is so low and his center of gravity is really low, it it, it would be really hard for Lorania to get those body shots in on Malik. And I think again, I'm a big body guy, right? And even when you're fighting Viking, I'm always like, shoot the body, shoot the body, right? Because you like to tag heads yeah. and. And keep the distance, and it's it's great. And then uh, that hook comes out of nowhere, and then you got to watch out for it. But I think with Lorania again, it's just how is he going to connect? That that would be the question: is how is he going to connect the power shot that could affect Malik Ogun? And then how is Malik Ogun going to reach that height with that wailing overhand that he tries to throw? It's going to be hard. Okay, I got a I got another title fight. 
Tyler Spice needs to go back to five rounds. Like this three rounds. I agree. Is, is I all? agree. I don't I agree you, with you, the you three round option. option. Yes. Keep picking three. I don't agree with that. Just means people are being <laughs> pussies about it. Like needs to be yes. You know, being, being a champion. champion you being a champ. Up. Okay, but being a champion and having to fight five rounds, I feel like yes, for non-title fights. Yes, in three rounds, no problem. But if you're fighting for the title, and you guys agree you're fighting for the title, it should be five rounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, no and ifs or what's about it, you know? But yeah. if you're not agreeing to fight for the title, then I understand it. Three rounds, no problem. But but the title can't be up for grabs. You know what I'm saying? No. And I agree. But, I agree, too. Just I, I think leaning on what you're saying, though, that five rounds – it, it forces both fighters, not just the challenger, but the the, 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 the champion to be prepared. Um, sometimes you go as a champion, and you're not doing well, this is cake, this is cake work, right? And yeah. there are guys such as yourself who can last those rounds and yeah, be effective and hard. not really get fatigued. And we need to see those five round fights just to just to push the limit a little bit. Well, facts. So one one counter argument to the five round fight is that. We are limited on time when we're out there and adding a couple more rounds to these title fights makes the fight go on, you know. I understand. Plus, I understand. So, like, so, 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 so like the business six side. Like, just to have five, it. six title fights in the same day. Like we had last bit. I mean, sometimes you that. can't really. That's kind of why, like, if you're the champ, though, you can just be like, yeah, I want it to be a five rounder. If the champ yeah. maybe hasn't been in the gym every day training, then maybe they just want to make it a three round fight. So um, Uh, there's also the editing part of it too. And the, in the storage, you know, it it makes for bigger files. And I I mean, I think the option as a champion, if you're the champion, you have the choice. So it can be a five rounder. If you want it, I'm not taking five rounders away. I'm just making it an option. Yeah. I feel it for you. Like I feel it. Boxing is there to do um, work. But so I had a, another idea instead of La Arania, and that was um, if we could get him back, is Golden Hands. Yeah, so Golden, he knows that. yeah but, but have you talked to him, though? Oh, I talked to him on and off, yeah. Um, Golden Hands versus Maliko Goon at 155, I think would be probably yeah. – as technical as that'd be an epic fight that definitely yeah, would fight and it would be that should be good push for goon new versus old you know and it would be yeah. Yeah. for the title too because golden hands technically never lost the title never lost the title i think it's just a matter of looking at where golden hands has been right because golden hands been off the scene for a while and you know last i recall and i could test base with him he he stopped training at the gym and he was training out of his house uh maybe training with some friends and uh, periodically, I don't. He said that boxing kind of wasn't really the thing, and he was uh, starting to get more into car detailing and and you know painting and things like that. Where you know, I think he was just kind of like, "Hey, man, it's time for me to get to the next level with my with my personal life," you know. And so, uh, working and trying to trying to make a living was kind of important at the time. And now, of course, that was a couple years ago, or a year, just over a year ago. Yeah. yeah. But he's awesome. He's another guy that I like. I really like a body shot guy, a guy that uses the body. I love the way that he sinks down into his punches and really bangs. Reminds me of Miguel Cotto. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, he I is similar stuff. He, I love the way that when he gets hit, how he he takes the punch and goes with it. He with it. Yeah, he goes yeah. with the punch. He goes with it. it. Sometimes it looks like it landed a little harder than it actually did, but, but he does that to – yeah, take the impact away. It's really cool because yeah. when he goes with it, he actually brings something behind when he's rolling yeah. back. So the punch will come and he'll slightly move and then come back with one to the body. And he does that back and forth to the body while he's taking the punch, but he's actually rolling off the punch with his own body. It's pretty neat. Got a question on the screen for you. Do I have any fight experience? I actually do. Um, I started off boxing when I was like four years old at the uh, Hillman City Boxing Club in Columbia City back in the day. Actually, D. Ellis was one of the guys at our gym back in the day. So oh, D. Wow. Ellis is a fighter. He came out, uh, fought back then, and then went over to uh, Bumblebee Boxing where I fought under Coach B uh, for several for several years. Um, I fought there until I was like 18 from like 
six to, to I want to say like eight to eight to 13 or 14. Um, then B kind of picked me up to the next level. When I got to about 16 years old, kind of, I was in and out 13 to 16. I was in and out kind of street living and hanging out in the neighborhood. And then I got back into it because my mom and dad were like, man, you're doing too much. You got to get back into this. So I got back into that. And then coach B actually helped me get over to TBC at Tacoma boxing back in the day. Tacoma boxing was the Avenue for USA boxing for local talent right here. They were one of the biggest. I mean, yeah, B had some stuff. We had stuff at our gym, but TBC. So uh, 1990, 97, 1998, I did Golden Gloves in 1997 and 1998. Uh, fought even in the title round one world championships in 2024 or 2004. Sorry about that. Yeah. Nice. nice. A lot of people don't know about it because I really don't like to talk about it. I don't like to brag or anything. And I, I, I felt like a lot of times my fighting career, because I have, my uncle who my aunts, I mean, my uncle, who's, you know, cousin Toby Gibson, my uncle Milton Rich, you know, these guys are all fighters at the pro level. And I really never went that way, but I was better as an athlete than them. And all right. Hey, if you, I think we got some footage of uh, Lynn Spawn. Man, one day Lynn yeah. was spawn everybody in the motherfucking in the uh, cage. Man, this dude was really showing some skill. Man, I was like, okay, Lynn still got it. I think he beat up Pappas. I think he beat up a couple other people. Man, this dude was whooping ass. I'm like, well, this guy. It, it's hard when you when you get back into it and you haven't been into it and you're kind of like. You don't know what to expect. So yeah. you, draw off of, you draw off of what other people are doing, which for me, I've always been a big range. I, I like to find people. I like to figure out what they're doing first, and then I'm able to fight. So I, I, I used yeah. to tend to catch a lot of shots in the beginning, um, and then off of those shots, now I know what your power is like. I know what you feel like, and I know what I can do to someone once I gauge what they're able to do, and that's kind of when it goes I'll just take it to the next level on you, you know, and, and now, you know, I train here and there, but I just, I, you know, I, I get that passion because I'm around you guys, you know, I'm around fighters. I'm around yeah. guys, I see you guys doing BKFC and I'm, you know, I, I go out and want to hit my punching bag or I want to go out. I have a, I have a that's little good. That's what you that's what you should do. And that's what we you know, what the scrapyard is here for you to, to keep you, you know what I'm saying? Motivated in different areas. You know what I'm saying? And, and to keep pushing yourself to be more well-rounded. You feel me? Well, you I know, see too, that. Also, I just, I just had surgery just a little bit less than a month ago on my nose where my devi I had a deviated septum. And I actually came from being hit in the nose. It never broke. But my septum actually pushed all the way to the left so severe that I couldn't breathe out my nostrils. So I just got that fixed. I would be a little bit worried about getting hit again and my septum deviating because then I would have to get surgery again. And if you don't know the cost of these things, we're up into like three thousand dollars and or more, even just to even go through therapy and treatment. So it's like you know, I'm finally able to breathe, you know, and I think now my cardio could be better because you know, if, you have, if you have, you know, how it's like when you're sick and you're training, it's like yeah. you can't breathe already, so it's hard to build the cardio up. So for me, now that I can breathe, I feel like now I can really get some cardio in. Yeah, whole new man. That's a, you know, and I've been stuff. and I've been hitting the weights so. <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to show off yet, but you know I've been hitting it, so <laughs> nice. Yo, That's shit. good. That old man's yeah, face kicking in. Oh shit. Yeah. Gotta add Let's that shadow boxing. I realized uh I realized that the BKFC shit, how important shadow boxing is, man. They had a shadow boxing a little for a little bit, man. And I was like, yeah. damn, I only shadow box for a couple minutes. These dudes got me scratched out by like 10 minutes, you dude, know? Dude, I remember <laughs> I like, going there. You know? Look, I it gets boring, you know what I'm saying? Look, I remember at back I in the early 80s, Hillman City, just speaking on when I was training, our box, our coach used to give us those little five hand, five pound weights. You know, you yeah. little five pounds of the two and a half pound weights, and they're like little hand weights. And we used to have to yeah. shadow box with those in our hands until he told Change us. Our to order. So we're we're sweating. We're just drenched, and we can't stop yeah. until coach tells us to stop. So today, yeah. I think a lot of the training is very simple. I go back to the old school, and I'm like, man, the old school ways, you used to get hit with a stick. You know, you'd be like, uh, slapping your shoulder. That's what I'm talking about. 
Like when we were young, we could do that shit. Like I did all that, and that's yeah. why. Like this was, this was, this wasn't too hard for me. But it made me realize, you know, what I'm saying that I haven't gone through this shit in a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like my yeah. body was telling me this. Like, hey, T, you ain't done this in a while, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Were you hella sore you know, that day? <laughs> My abs, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I felt a little fatigue. It's because, like, I trained for it, but I didn't train what we were doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you don't particularly train what you're doing, then that is something new to your body. So it's going to react right. the next day. You know what I'm saying? You're going to feel it the next day. So right. I right. knew that. You know, I haven't done V-ups in, like, fucking three years, you know, four years. And I had to do that. And we had to do 50 straight. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> over this shit, man. Uh, yeah. Simo, 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 like, he trains, he trains, like, every day. And people don't know this. Yeah, Simo, every single day. Like, no, I know this. Day, I know this. And, day and night. Yeah. This dude comes to my, he comes to practice. He co hosts me coach. He comes to practice where I wait three days a week. For two hours, he leads our workouts. And he has our kids doing bicycle kicks, V-ups. And I sit there and watch this dude. And I'm like, the way he's shaped and how he looks when he does things, I be like, bro, you're, this is amazing that you can do this. Because I would just look at Simo on a regular and be like, man, can he do it? I question it. But, man, I see him do it. He would have been a really good guy to go out there and yeah. try it out. And, and he's training with Batman Smooth now. So like, I know. I heard. He has a fight coming up, too. Okay, Simo okay. does. He's actually fighting MMA. He has a fight. Uh, yeah, he has a fight coming up. He wants to, you know, he's been training really hard, uh, going through some little <clears> bit of you know health stuff. Just right, um, you know. I think I think Simo's putting in work, and I, I like to see what he's going to be doing pretty soon here. Yeah, glad to see him. I hey, they I answer the question. Like they answer the question I asked, and they said that. We should know by the by next weekend. So by Friday, Saturday, whatever, we we should know. Somebody should know. That's nice. Good to know. Nice. Yeah. Well, we were on. We got to move on, and let's move on to well. We were going to do an honored scrapyard member, but we're going to skip that and save that for the next event, our next episode. Um, and I think it. I think it's important that we wait because he's a very good. He's very. You know, I think he's very good for the scrapyard, and we we need to honor him. Um, but we'll wait for that till we get him on the next episode. So for those of you guys that, that are watching, uh, tap into the next episode, episode five, uh, where we're going to honor one of our, our, our volunteers. Oh, that yeah. so tap and into flatter, that. you know? Yeah. 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 Yep. And then now we're going to just move on yes, to all that. Two minute, you got two minutes, guys. We got a two minute training <laughs> tips. We'll go to two minute training tips and we'll let everybody kind of share if there's anything that the viewers or guys that are beginning, because um, there was a question that somebody said in the beginning, how do you prepare for these fights if you're a beginner? So, you know, let's tap in a little bit of training tips. I think it's important for us to I show. Wrote, I wrote arts. actually my little spiel on it. I, I picked out um, bag work. You know, I feel like this is one of the first things that people want to do when they're starting to get ready for, for these type of fights and stuff. Um, especially if you don't have access to training partners and everything, but a lot of people use the bag the wrong way. You know, they, they get in front of it. They just try to swing really hard and they don't, they don't treat it like an opponent. Um, you got to put it in your head that that's the person that you're fighting. And even though they're not physically throwing punches at you because they're a heavy bag, uh, you have to expect that that punches are. So there's a few different ways that you can go about boxing or kickboxing or whatever against a heavy bag there's the working the technique making sure your footwork's good making sure your head movement's good making sure you're slipping punches when you're throwing punches making sure you're bringing your hands back protecting yourself all that there, you know to, just to, not to cut you off but just yeah. to add what would you say when you say footwork what kind of exercises would you suggest that these guys can do when they're trying to increase footwork drills just so I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'll say just to like kind of piggyback on um, piggyback what you said, but on footwork they probably should like work on just entries, like instead of like always just standing in one spot, working back, kind of just like standing like in fire position in the first spot and work on an entry, you know, and then like do your combo, then back off, and then just repeat that. 
Yeah, out, actually, someone was out. just tapping in and said ladder drills. Uh, I think those are very important. Ladder drills, uh, maybe some agility hurdles, maybe even doing some cone work. Um, some line work line lines are the best you know what i'm saying we, we always yeah. use the lines uh in the parking lot you know what i'm saying in and out of them you know what i'm saying you could run sprints to each one you know what i'm saying back and forth type yeah. shit yeah all those i think getting on a line on a straight line making sure uh, you're positioned the proper way and yeah. step, step 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 and then back lead with the back foot lead with the front yeah. foot backwards Lead in the direction you want to go in. Get used to then, doing that. And then you could start yeah. going around an object. Slides, yeah. Footwork on a heavy bag is that you're trying to go around an object. So you got to make sure your feet are spaced properly, that you're not crossing your feet, um, that you're not leading with, with the opposite foot that you should. Um, just be mindful that, you know, you don't want to get tripped up when you're going around a person. So treat that bag like it's a person. So that's yeah. why I meant like work the one way the technique you know good tips just go slow and make sure everything's good um there's also the stamina and speed part of the heavy bag that's hitting it fast hitting it fast hitting it fast getting like that sweat going that real workout and then obviously like the power aspect of it like you know puts that wrap your hands good uh make sure your form is good and then beat the living crap out of the bag and build up those real bombs yeah yeah viking what do you got you got any training tips yeah for sure uh like the guy said for bands uh you could use bands you could do this the slip bag it doesn't matter what you use you know what i'm saying it's about learning how to use your equipment properly you know what i'm saying so remember whatever you try to do so watch somebody first you know get a little feel of it Maybe, you know what I'm saying, practice doing it, you know what I'm saying, on your own when people ain't around, try to make you comfortable. But at the end of the day, it's all about trying to learn fundamentals. When you start anything, I realize, like, anything that we try to do, that's why direction, it comes with directions. Like, it comes with a cage I just had to put together for my dog. It came with directions. Yeah, I could do it off the, off my mind of what i think it looks like right or i can read the directions and do it so-called properly so it's yeah. like fighting's the same thing you could you could you know pay attention to the fundamentals and try to do it that way or you could do it how your body's reacting to it and, and you know what i'm saying let it flow naturally and then you know let it go from there i guess you know because right. that's that's how most people start. You know, they start by just going out there, trying to let it go naturally. It probably doesn't look the best, you know, but they out there, you know, giving it their all, right? And then yeah. it, it usually progresses into something at the more that they put, you know what I'm saying, the time and energy into it. So at the end right. of the day, it's like, you know, I suggest that any new fighter that wants to pursue any martial arts boxing kickboxing MMA, whatever go in there and pay attention to the sport first pay attention to you know who's doing things see things out and then go in there and try to do your best for it you know what i'm saying but don't don't go in there with with a with a mind frame like okay i just watched this on tv let me go try this you know what i'm saying you should really like pay attention, maybe try it at home real quick before you go try to compete against people that, you know what I'm saying, can kick your ass, basically. Because yeah. I'll be watching that song, Strickland shit, and, and that should be cracking my cracking me up, you know? <laughs> I hate me, you know, fucking with people like that. And it's like, hey, you know, people that never fought before, you should not be trying to whoop their ass. You should not be trying, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. that is just, that's bullying to me. You know what I mean? So if anybody steps to me and I know that they ain't, you know, they ain't really got what it takes, I'm going to try to assist them in some type of way. That is my right. goal. You know? Not, everyone gets the hands the fuck. That's yeah. Just, um, you know, you got to do that. If someone's stepping up to you and then, like, they want the hands, like, you give it to them. Man, like, oh, hey, I don't know if you can fight. Like, the hell? How many times? I'm going to them, I'm gonna give it to them, but I'm going to give it to them my way. You know what I'm saying? Hands are I eat for everyone, my guy. 
<laughs> so you know what I was gonna what I was gonna say in respect to you training. got cat cat paws. You got cat paws. Oh, <laughs> 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 Fuck you. I got uh, dog paws, man. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but one of the training tips that I, that I had that I was writing down in training tips was similar to what you were talking about is just not trying to advance too fast. A lot of people try to advance too fast. And I think that's what me, I think I'm online with what you were saying, Viking, is I think just starting with the basics. And sometimes it's it does come down to just doing one thing at a time and getting good at the one thing before you try to add too much to what you're doing. So it's just compiling yeah. piece by piece where, like you said, maybe it's a progression thing. You start here and you progress doing one thing great. And for us, we always talk about footwork, defense, and work the jab. So those three things to me, I think are real basic. Start off with that. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that I don't think we tap on enough of is, 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 is pivoting our feet when we punch um, or rotating nice. our hips. Right. So a lot of guys yeah. I see not doing the rotation of the hips, not throwing from the shoulders and they want to push the punch and I think it or swing the punch with all this power coming from behind them. But I think sometimes you can channel that into a different direction, but really just the basics, you know, uh, I right. see a lot of guys want to throw can combinations. Well, if you can't throw a punch and you don't know what a one, two is, then why are you going with all this other stuff? You know, I think, I think just slowing it down, getting the basics and then also get somebody to work so that you can help so that you get better at your defense. Let people work, you know, throw jabs at you or throw some shots at you and figure out how to move your head, you know, and, and things like that. I think it's very important, but I do agree going back to the basics and keeping it very simple. Um, not trying to add too much will help you progress in the long run um, and be great at it. Thanks. Great. Crazy. What you got? For training tip, uh, train hard, train hard, train hard, and kick a lot. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know, like, I'm horrible, I'm not the best trainer. Like, I get yelled at, got yelled at yesterday for training. I, I got yelled at by my coach yesterday at training, so like, I'm not the best at training, you know. It What'd you get yelled training. at about? Why don't you share? Because, uh, I guess, so fine. Cause um, cause my upcoming match, I guess I'm fighting a guy who's mainly based in um, he's um, he's based, who's mainly based for I'm talking to, so like he's a kicker. So I'm like, okay, like he's a kicker. We've been working on my on my hands for a while, but like I want to test my kicks with a taekwondo fighter. So like, all right, why not? Can I? Why can't I have a kicking contest with the taekwondo fighter? And he's like, what are you talking about? Like that's stupid. I was like, why? Like no. Like it sounds fun. Anyways, yeah, I got yelled at for for pretty much that trying to embrace my opinion <laughs> of like why can I have the kick? Oh, you could do it. Kicking. You gotta sit. You gotta yeah, throw yeah. the leg kicks to set up your yeah, spinning kicks. Throw the but leg he's kicks just to be set up your spinning kicks. kicks. I can just throw kicks, you know. If he's gonna throw uh -huh. kicks, I can just throw kicks. Right. Yeah. I Don't know, throw too many know. body kicks against kickers. You know, against kickers, you don't want to throw too many body kicks. Right, right. But no, uh, I've been working on my hands a lot. Like, my hands are coming well. I think your coach is looking out for what he thinks your best your best shot is for, you know, taking the fight. You know, so if he thinks that yeah, yeah. your hands are better, then he probably wants you to focus on that and overwhelm yeah. this dude with that. So. I mean, he's yeah, just looking yeah. at it from that perspective, and and I, I see that. So yeah, yeah, sure. Like, no, I have some good coaches. It's just like, yeah, I just like yelled it, but whatever. All right, well, uh, let's move, let's move on. I got a good one. This was the one that I think I was prepared for most this week because I was able to kind of talk to some other people about it, and I'll share that with you guys in a minute. But let's talk about haters gonna hate, right? The success that haters comes going hate. hate. The success that comes with being great. Haters going to hate, right? And <laughs> I love this. Um, you know, talking with uh, my cousin who uh, he's he's a nighttime radio uh, host uh, for KJSR radio station. I uh, was able to bring on Big Boy from Outcast and E-40 and just being a part of that and listening to how, you know, E-40 talks about haters going, hey, it's, it's so phenomenal to hear it. But um, 
it doesn't matter what level of success you have. You got to always remember people are going to have something to say about it. Um, and, and it's not always going to be great. Uh, but when you when you when you hear that, I think the best thing you can do is counter that. Just like in fighting, counter it. Counter with something back. Don't sit back and absorb yeah. what happens and and try to ignore it because it's gonna fester and it's gonna ball up and it's gonna make you react in a way that maybe not be show you you know let you be professional or take you out of character. So a lot of times we deal with it even on on, on street beefs. I mean. People make comments and this is something that I want to lean into because I'm okay with it. And I don't care what people think about me because I, at the end of the day, it is what it is. But the last, last uh, episode we were on, you know, just episodes or even, uh, you know, our group chats and everything, people say things and it bothers us, right? Sometimes. And I think what we got to realize too is, man, call them out on it. Don't just let people, you know, because it's like we step in the ring. We're fighters. We don't want to get bullied. But at the same time, we want to say, hey, man, look, stop doing that because you're not. What are you doing? You're making yourself look bad. You're trying to make me look bad. What overall are you trying to accomplish? So we got to start dressing these guys that are saying things that bother us and then wait for the 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 the, the closing or the, the conversations after behind the behind closed doors to talk about it. We should talk about it on these platforms. And so for me, I, I want guys to call be niggas out. I always say this, if you ain't got, and we all know it, if you ain't got positive, some positive say, they don't say nothing at all, right? If you're not contributing well, uh, to the, to the, to the, the growth or the uplift of a fighter or somebody's training video or whatever it is, you should be able to give them positive reinforcement because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for, right? We're not here for all the, all the whack, you know, and all the hating. Oh, oh, maybe it's a, maybe it's a fighter. Maybe it's a show. Maybe it's, a uh, fire chicken said this, or it's Lynn said that, or Viking warrior. He's he should be doing. He, I think he should be doing this. Well, come on, man. You know we we all have uh we all have our own opinions, but let's keep our opinions to ourselves if they're negative. Um, because we we, we support a freaking uh, we we support a, 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 a I think a group um or an avenue that we need to promote positive. Because if we're going to talk about yes. mental health. That we need to shut that shit down quick and stop letting people say what they want. We should address it if it's ugly and, and address it right then and there. And I don't care who yeah. it is. That's just well, me. Yeah. When it when it comes to like the YouTube comments and stuff, in my opinion, that stuff on the platforms, Instagram, all that, if it's just a random person, like for the most part, they don't even deserve acknowledgement because. I mean, where, where's their place to come in and say something when they're not even involved with this? They're just hating for no reason. So, like, to spend all this time, like, battling these people that don't really, that aren't part of it or anything, like, to me, it's pointless. Because, like, I've been doing this for four years now. I've been putting out videos for a while. And if I were to go into every video, I would be, I mean, I don't have enough time in the day to battle these people. It's it's pointless. Yeah. But I do agree with what you say that, as far as... Uh-huh with if it matters if it's a yeah. person that that you need to address and talk to yes um for sure but just these random haters because the internet there will never ever be any shortage no matter how good you're doing no matter how positive you are there will never ever be any shortage of haters on youtube instagram and all these other platforms well you know what the other thing yeah. is uh, we're not getting- i'd be having I have fun with my haters. Like I, I, I don't know about y'all. Y'all be ignoring them, whatever. I fuck with my see haters. That. Like I, I show yeah. y'all, I show y'all see it. I, for I fuck with my haters. I but that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Crazy, like, y'all. I commend you for that because so, yeah, I yeah. think that's what I'm saying is that we need to address them. So if it's yeah, if it's man. telling you back or saying something back, just not letting bullies be bullies, right? Because yeah. you know, yeah. like, do that, bro. Like we like, gotta funny, like, they, like they honestly think they're they honestly think they're bothering me, but like literally, I'll just be. Watching a show in my bed, fucking smoking a blunt, just fucking with them. But like, apparently, they're <laughs> like, and like a lot of them call me out. It's like, oh, they're gonna fight me, blah blah. But uh, like, literally, not a single one has come. So like, they're all talk, they're nothing but talk. And yeah. like, just fuck with them because like, they don't mean shit. They're not gonna do shit. They're not for haters. Yeah, they're that M- that M and M's. That Eminem song pops in my head every time. You can suck my dick in, you know, like, why is it? Because I was high when I did this, so suck my dick. 
<laughs> Facts. Yep, yep. Uh, that's my. I'm that's how I feel. Uh, like it, it just pops in my head when whenever a hater hates, and I just, I just want to tell them that. You know what I'm saying? If I can't tell them that directly, then I keep it peaceful and I don't say shit. Well, yeah, like, we're, sometimes we're, like, in age we're, in, we're in this age where technology is taking over. It ain't no more. Yeah. Hey man, come out your house. Let's meet out in the street. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. So you got all these people like saying things and making comments on everything that goes on. And it's like, man, you know what? You ain't going, you ain't paying me for one. You ain't going to touch me for two. Right. So you're really not, you're really not right. And we can, it's like clowning them a little bit. I like how crazy said, you know, I, I fucks with them. Right. I like that. Cause we got to snap right. back sometimes, clap back sometimes and, and show right. our, and let people yeah, know. Like sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. A little, sometimes, little bit, sometimes. a little bit. But not too much. Oh, okay. Crazy okay. be doing too yeah. much sometimes, and that's okay. that, that just that, yeah, that's compulsive shit. Don't do all that. Okay. Just oh, hey, man. you can oh, get I'll on the motherfucking down. helmet. You can get on the motherfucking helmet, but don't be uh, like, like you know. What I mean? Sometimes <laughs> I try to stand up. I'm like, why you hate it? Like, yo, fuck. Because like I want to yeah. understand. I want to. I want to see their viewpoint. I want to see their viewpoint. Yeah. Like, why are you hating? Like, what is what is you seeing that's so hateful that made you? made you so mad that you have to comment like i want to understand that yeah. i want to understand yeah. that every point and a lot of times it's bullshit they're just hating to hate like they have no real reason right right or, right or just or just people trying to help micromanage what's happening in, yeah. in different avenues just like man leave me alone let me do me you do you i do me <laughs> it just shows that it just shows that you're doing something you know what i'm saying you obviously doing something better than them and they don't like it so but now you're suck talking, you're talking Tell him, suck that dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Um, but yeah, just just that alone, I think that was something just on the real on the more of a real side, is just this advice to guys that are out here getting negative things and, and it draws them into a negative space in their mind. You could you could choose to ignore it or you could choose to handle it in a way where you don't let it fester in you. But we got to have something said about it and we need to bring it up because these things do lead to things that we deal with on a regular basis. Going back to mental health, being bullied is yeah. not something that I think is, is appropriate. And even though we're not children and we're not in the playground, we are adults. And, and a lot of times we let our uh, other people's opinions kind of overweigh our emotions. And we got to stop that and, and allow people to you know say what they're going to say. But at the same time, tell them if you don't like what they're saying, hey, man, that's not cool. You know, um, nice. for real. And then just, you know, on, on the spec of the yard, I'm going to speak for the yard now, you know, on respect to the, to the, to the yard itself, you know, and I'm not referring to any other branches. I'm just saying the yard. Sometimes we got to remember that what we're building here, it's got to be better than what other people are thinking. And so we got to always keep that, that mindset and that forefront. Hey man, you know, look, we're, we're doing something great over here. We're providing opportunities We're we're, we're going to the next level or we're, we're doing a great thing because our community is, yeah. is based positive reinforcement to the guys that are dealing with mental challenges. Yes. Right. Helping people's mental health, helping people, you know, overcome, you know what I'm saying, their own adversity. You know what I'm saying? People, people that never, you know what I'm saying, came out the the shell before is, you know what I'm saying, came out to the scrapyard and pushed themselves and became, you know, in, into uh, an organization that is like a brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we all family. Yeah. Like, there's so many fighters that I've done seen over the year, the three years I've been there, is almost four years to where fighters that, you know, you could tell they don't got no friends. They, you know what I'm saying? They're antisocial people, and they come out there and they push themselves for the first time, and they become somebody different. You know what I'm saying? Every time they come. You know what I mean? They 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 bring a little more spaz, sus, spaz or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Suspense. You know what I'm saying to them. You feel yeah. me? Like it really brings out a different character. Yeah. You feel me? I, I think that yeah. the this whole thing has changed a lot of people. One thing I like seeing, I love going to people's Facebooks and seeing the pictures, the profile pictures, the banners, all the stuff that like that was taken in the scrapyard. That was met like you you met these people. You know, looking at their friends list and it's like, oh, we have, you know, 150 friends in common. It's like that right there proves that we've really made some positive connections and that this is a community. And 
like mental health, you know, it's a place that you can come and depend on it and, um, and be part of it, you know, and look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. And someone just had wrote that right. and this was a comment that for me, I, I was, I can appreciate that somebody had just sent in that we're cousins to, uh, the street beast West, West coast. And I, and I love that, that we can be acknowledged as family across two different branches. But when we say that we're family, we really got to make sure that we support one another. Um, and, and them as well, right? So whether that's the West Coast or hard in the fight, we support each other in a very positive way because I think this, we're just opening doors for a lot of guys that want to travel between both both spaces. And me, no, and me and Crazy Legs and Steve, we all know personally that the West Coast definitely is family and they definitely know how to open up arms, you know what I'm saying, and yeah, show yeah, sure. a warm welcome in it. And we, we try to do our best to do the same for them, you know? It's not always, you know what I'm saying, cool between everybody, but at the end of the day, you know, we're fighters. You know, we all, yeah. we all, you know, like to compete in some type of way. So, you know, it's not always going to be, you know, all eyes to eyes, you know, goody yeah. good, you know, happy hugs, you know, it ain't like yeah. that with family. It ain't like that with family, you know, you're yeah, going to bump heads family sometimes. You we feel me? Also, just, we also need to kind of embrace and say that. It's, we're not just talking about it's all love. Yeah, I it's all love. The West Coast had no, I love, I love Street Beefs <laughs> as a whole branch, as but whole I know, team. I know out of all the organizations, the West Coast and the Scrapyard, you know, uh, more. You know what I'm saying when it comes to family oriented. Like I love, you know what I'm saying what Texas and you know what I'm saying the main branch is doing, but. That, you know, I know personally that they don't reach out and try to, you know, encourage others and try to do things with us. You like, like right. we try to do with the West Coast or the West Coast try to do with us. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, it looks yeah, like we're gonna. I think Diesel's saying that Wonder Boy might be here. Um, He's ready to go. Oh, so let's tap him so in. Let me do, let me I, do I a mission statement really quick and tell you guys really quick before he comes on what. Man, what, my phone's dying. Oh, what? How, in, how's your phone dying? Put it on the charger, yeah. brother. Statement. Let let me get this going, guys. Um, okay. so we're a backyard fight community. We help people. We help by solving beasts. We help people to be part of something that's awesome. We're here for your mental health. Um, we're here to help you find opportunities. If if your goal is to go pro, we can help you with that. If you just want to get a fight in and see if it's for you, we can help you with that. If you want to try to um, dust some ring rust off, you know, that's another thing that we can do out here. So essentially we're just a big community of people that are looking out for each other and want to help each other achieve whatever goals they want to achieve. So nice. um, Scrapyard, like I said, good community. Now we're going to bring on our special guest. Um, this is a UFC veteran, YouTuber, and undefeated pro kickboxer. Welcome to Scrap Talk, Wonder Boy Thompson. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up? Dude, sorry, I'm just now coming on, man. Classes got to me. Dude, whenever I start teaching classes, I get in the zone, man. I just forget everything else. So I, I apologize. That's uh, all no right. Worries. No worries. No worries. It happens. We're, we're glad you made it and, and that you're on the go. show. No wonder, boy. You have a lot uh, of fans that are watching you, and uh, sp especially from the Street Beach, all branches, right? Because, uh, we just want you to know that we all support you. We love that with what you're doing and what you have done in the fight community. And we oh, thank man, you for coming I, on the show, bro. Are you kidding me? You know, I'm blessed to be where I'm at, man. And and I'm a huge fan of you guys. I've been watching you guys from the beginning, man. So I love the I love what you guys are doing, not just in the fight game, especially for guys who wanted the experience to fight an up and coming fight, right? The, the, but what you're also doing with the community. I, I'm a big community guy, man. You know, I'm always out there to help my community make it grow, which is why I teach the martial arts, you know, teach these guys, you know, character building skills, skills that they're going to take for the rest of their lives. And it starts right here because they're not getting it anywhere else. These yeah. Nice. Anywhere else these days. So they got to get it from somebody. And when I help them, it definitely helps our community out as well. So I appreciate it, my guys. 
Yeah, yeah, we appreciate it too. You know, um, before I know we all got questions. We're all excited to have you hit on me the with show. Him, baby. Hit uh, me with we're them. gonna hit you with it. But before we do that, you were speaking on community. I'm a big community guy myself. I coach in all different aspects with youth. And I wanted to just ask you, do you how much community engagement do you do in respect to like reaching out to the youth or the community fighters that are in your local area? What do you what do you do? Hundred percent, man. I mean, number one, you know, a lot of guys that come in, they want to be fighters. We got a lot of young kids who, um, you know, maybe are having problems at home or in school or just in general. This is a great place. Help stick karate is a great place for these guys to come off, come in, blow some steam in a in a, in a safe and healthy environment. And so I'm a huge about building our guys here. But not only that, I literally go to every elementary school pretty much in Greenville mm-hmm. County. For Red Ribbon Week, man, you know what I mean? Uh, career day, drug awareness, all kinds of things like that. I've been all going right. to our local elementary schools, middle schools, and even high schools for years. Since I was, man, probably 16, 17 years old. Man, that is you so know? awesome to know, okay. man. I'm a bigger fan now than I was. Okay. <laughs> Heck, I love dude, guys that do stuff with the youth, man. Dude, I love it, man. This is my, like, you know. When I know what the martial arts has done for me, not just as a martial artist, but just being a good man. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. know, it, the martial arts is about it's about modesty, about courtesy, integrity, you know, self-control, showing perseverance, showing that indomitable spirit. When things get tough, you don't give up. You don't quit. You keep going. And yeah. just seeing these guys, these kids come in and they come in for different reasons if it's you know losing losing weight or if it's maybe they're having trouble with bullies in school or if it's self you know self-confidence thing after they leave that first day and see them with a smile on their face it's all worth it yeah you know it's all yeah. worth it. we got I kids here. on that man yep yes sir we got we've got three generations come through here my dad's been in business for 41 years you know been the martial arts for over 50 years and We've got grandkids of parents and grandparents that have been through us. So right. wow. we got kids here who started when they were three years old. And I'm looking up at them now. You know, I'm looking, they're 21, 22 years old. And just knowing that I had a positive influence in his or her life, you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. worth it. Serving others is literally the best job. Awesome. Yeah. That is great. That is great. LB, that is great. LB3, he's he's done a number of 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 uh, he's done a ton of coaching over the years. Uh, myself, I've coached uh, youth wrestling before, baseball, and some other sports. So, seeing the the look on kids' faces, you know, um, it, that's that is, yeah, it's amazing. Yes, they sir. get a lot out of it, and uh, it's uh, it, it's worth it. And, well, and you know, a lot of these, a lot of these youngsters, you know, that are coming up, um, especially this generation, you know, they're not getting this kind of character building skills in other sports and sometimes at home. So, and, you know, um, I, I know I don't have any kids, not yet. Anyway, I don't have any kids, but I know how I was raised. Yeah. And sometimes that tough love is, is just what these kids need. They need that tough love. Yeah. They gotta let it, they gotta be jacked up every now and then to, to let them know that, Hey man, you gotta act, you gotta act right. And especially if it's, if it's, if it's man to man, you know, you got this young, young stud coming up giving mom and dad problems at home, you got to, you still got to let them know. And, and, you know, that tough love is, is how I grew up and I, I wouldn't be the man I am today. If it wasn't for that tough love, I hated it at the time. Like I wasn't, I wasn't friends with my parents. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't, I, they were not friends with me. I, I feared my dad. I feared yeah. my mom, you yeah. know, and that's how it should be. You should, you should fear them. And it wasn't until I left the house before I started becoming friends with my dad. Sure. Sure. And same with me, man. I I feel the same way. Like I grew up, I was scared of my parents. They enforced the rules, but it made me a better person in the end. And I look back and it's like, I wouldn't have changed anything. You know, they were hard on me, but, but they made me into the person I am now. And I, I've, I can't, uh, I would never take that back. I mean, and today, and the kids today are, you know, with all the technology and then dealing with COVID and things, there's not a lot of structure anymore that we used to have. And so no. having a gym that the kids can co- come to and Steven to come to your place and you provide that atmosphere where there's some structure there for the youth, I, I think is amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. I think, you know, yeah, I've been, I've been, I, I fight for the fun of it. I fight for the honor. I fight for the glory. 
I fight because it, it, it keeps me, it keeps me going, it keeps me young, it keeps me yeah. feeling good. It keeps the uh, that competitiveness that I have in me at a high level. And 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 number two, if I stop now, I'd probably fall apart. <laughs> but, you know, I'm 41. I'm considered a veteran in the game of the UFC, but I feel I feel like I'm 25, man. I you yeah. know the way I move. Of course, the injuries don't heal up like they used to. Right. But right. I've got 600 kids right here watching every move that I make inside and outside that cage. And for me to just show a little bit of, of humility in, in a win or a loss, and they see that, you know what I mean? It makes yeah. all the difference in the world. I don't yeah. go out there. I don't trash talk, you know. And I know a lot of people are making money doing it. Kudos to them. But, you know, I want to I wanna win in a, in, a, in, a, in a humbling fashion. You know, with finesse, yeah. right? With uh, with you know that traditional martial arts background behind me, and you know what I mean. So, uh, I want—I just want to be an example, not just for the kids here, but all around the world, man. Everybody that that tunes in to watch me fight. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go into a couple of questions that I have, and then we'll go into crazies questions. Bike yes, sure come back on in a minute, and then we're going to end with fire chicken. Uh, one of the questions I have was in respect to thinking about your rank right now you've been ranked in the top 10 by i mean 2024 top 10 right you've been ranked and you're number nine how does that um of top 10 i'm gonna go type top 10 welterweights though right um fighters which couple opponents right now that are within that top 10 do you got an eye set on oh man there's 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 several of them it's funny because they're you know i i'm i come from an, an era of where they were still specialists. You yeah. Know? yeah. I was a striking specialist. You had Anderson Silva, a striking specialist. You had, you know, Matt Hughes, a wrestler. You had Damian Maya, the, the, the jujitsu <laughs> practitioner. So right. I still kind of come from that era. And I'm still playing catch up, especially when it comes to the ground game, still working on it every day, still trying to try to improve. But now you, I'm in with these youngsters, man, that are just phenomenal everywhere, right? Got good right. wrestlers and things like that. But there, I feel like I'm still, I can still go out there and, 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 and do work. But, you know, Ian Gary is one of those guys that I'm look, that I'm looking at who's obviously tried to get a fight in the past with me. He, he might be fighting Colby Covington. He's ranked higher than me now. Yeah. Um, which, which is, which is fine. I, I don't, I, I, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me one bit, but Ian Gary is one of those guys. I would, I wouldn't mind another rematch with Shavkat. Yeah. I Let's wouldn't go. mind another rematch. You know, my goal in life, it's like an anime, bro. I, I want to be able to say to my grandkids that I fought the best fighters in the world. And at that weight class, obviously. But still, they're the best fighters. Who could say that? Fought the best fighters in the freaking world? Are you kidding me? Come on. That, well, that, you know, that that's kind of, my goal. When nobody that, wanted to fight Shavkat, I'm like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Yeah. yeah. So you those are the, those are the two that I think you would might most likely you'd like to entertain? Oh, yeah. Dude, well, I mean, obviously, everybody wanted – after his, his UFC debut, everybody wanted the MVP fight. Michael Venom Page. You know, he's a good buddy of mine. We come from a mark, you know, obviously the karate background, but we have we also have a very, very similar style. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. We are we are what we call counter strikers. So it has the potential to be a could could be a, even he said it, I think, a very Never. boring fight. Just okay. us sitting there bouncing, looking at each other, waiting for somebody to do something, you know, and just nothing, you know, nothing happened. And I think people want to see that because we do have a similar style. Who's got okay. that, you know, who's who's got the best karate style. But he, even he said it, it could it could possibly be a very boring fight. And that's that's the last thing I want to do is put somebody through a, a snooze fest, you know. But yeah. um. There's a lot of guys in that welterweight division. It's crazy, man. I've been in the top ten, top five, top ten for while, since for a while. Yeah, 2014, I think. 15. Yeah, well, from so, 2015 to 2024, geez. you've been ranked in the top ten, and and especially top five when it comes to striking. So you've accomplished some great things in your sport. Thank you, man. I, I, that's the first time I ever thought about that. Because when you said nine, it's like, dude, when was the last time I was nine? I got another fight now. I got to get another fight so I can stay up above that ten. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, man, there's a, I mean, 
I I wouldn't mind facing off against any one of those. It's it's crazy because you have the top ten, top fifteen, but anybody in the UFC is freaking. Dangerous. I don't care. I don't care who they are, where they're ranked. Well, you can't sleep on. You definitely can't sleep on the on the up and comers, right? Because you no. don't know what they're capable of. They're hungry, and I, I love giving those up and comers a shot. There's so many guys in the top that are that want to hold on to their spot. Yeah, come on up, fight me. Let's go. I you know, love. I did it. that was Vicente Luque, uh, Jeff Neal. You know, a lot of these guys that were like dark horses in the in, in the division, and we we scrapped it out, man. <laughs> and then Kevin I got one was one of them too. I got one more question for you, and then we'll yes, pass sir. it on to the next guy. So the other question is, I have for you: What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say fifty-seven and zero in a, as a champion kickboxer versus UFC champion? What comes to mind when you kind of look at those two and say, "How do I compare my success in either in in, in or the medium in that?" What are you thinking? Okay. Because two, you accomplished two great complete, things. yeah, two completely different sports, right? Yes, it's yes. like those MMA guys going over to boxing. Yeah. Two no, completely different sports, right? Uh -huh. um, when it comes to kickboxing, I feel like it's it's very it's a very difficult sport because it's like fighting another boxer, right? In MMA. You got the wrestler. You got the you got the, the the grappler. You have so many options that you can pick. Yeah. To try to beat somebody. And kickboxing is is very difficult. You all you have two things. You can kick the dude. Or you can punch the dude. You know what I mean? It, it, and it's it's hard because everybody has perfected that craft for so many years. When I went over to to, to Hungary and fought in the Walker World Championships, I was facing off against guys with over three hundred fights. Three, you know, I was only like, you know, nice. 30 and 0. You had the dudes out there fighting. They had over 300 fights. These dudes were fighting every weekend. Right. Now, yeah. which one is, is, is harder, I think, to, 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 um, I guess, to be successful in? I think it's, I think it's MMA. Okay. You know, I did it. I pretty much yeah. did everything I could when it came to kickboxing. Um, 57, I was undefeated. You know, I had, had world titles. But I met George St. Pierre, and he started bringing me in to help tell him get ready for these other strikers. You know, Tiago Alves, BJ Penn, he was a great boxer at the time. And we became good friends. And I started learning more jujitsu and wrestling just to be a better sparring partner for him. And then I started training with Anderson Silva, the Oto Machida. The guys were bringing me in. Wow. I'm like, I'm training with these champions. Why not switch from kickboxing wow. to MMA? It was just something new, I think. Okay. And I had been doing kickboxing since I was a kid. It was just something new that I just wanted to jump in, and I'm still learning every day. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think what I was kind of getting at in, in asking you that question was having that 57-0 and record, which is an amazing, right, and then tra transcending over to the MMA world, or UFC, where you become another pillar oh, of man. success. Do you, uh, how do you rate the two? Right, you're like, oh yeah. man. Well, I, I I've been raised to to work hard in everything that I do. There's there's a thing called uh, you know kung fu, right? In, in, yeah. in, in, in the in, in in the Chinese. Um, um world kung fu is doing everything that you do even the small things to the best of your ability i don't care if it's tying your yes. shoes if it's making your bed up if it's cleaning the dishes you do it to the to your best ability yeah and in doing that but. even the, you know, the small things that you do in life you'll find success in in everything that you do yeah, I use that actually saying in my when I coach, I always say that the way we do small things are the way we'll do all things. So we have to focus on the way we do the small things so that we can progress properly. Yes, and so yes, I, I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Crazy legs, we're on to you. What questions do you have? Okay, Int yeah, yeah. Nice introduce yourself, here. man. <laughs> okay, mother. <It> was, uh, <laughs> well. As I first want to say, one of the boys, it's really nice to meet you, like as a fellow it's kickboxer. Nice. Like, it's always nice to meet someone else who like enjoys kick. And um, I'm the I'm the fire of the year for Street Beats and uh, Scrapyard and 
Street Peace as a whole. So I'm not sure if he's seen in my fight. But like, yeah, check them out. They're pretty interesting. Heck yeah, dude. Dude, I'll do I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some breakdowns on you, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, Let's yeah. Please, it. please do, please do. Like I yeah, I'm sure you love my fights to get a good laugh for sure. Heck like, yeah, I got man. some I techniques, got some these. Yeah. And for sure, my first question is I want to start off is um since you're a kickboxer, what's your favorite kick? My favorite kick, I think y'all probably know what I'm gonna say. My favorite kick is the side kick. <laughs> And the reason that is because okay. not a whole lot of people have, you know, work the sidekick because mostly in MMA, people are more have they, they, they have more of a Muay Thai striking background. Right. Yeah. Um, you go to a lot of MMA gyms. It's mostly boxing or Muay Thai is their striking background for that MMA gym. In karate. It's a very different style. Right. When it comes to the movement, the, the lead leg techniques. And when I throw a sidekick, um, number one, not a whole lot of people are, are, are used to the sidekick because a lot of uh, Muay Thai gyms, they don't throw a lot of sidekicks. So they're not used to seeing it. Yeah. But I like a sidekick as well because I can disguise it and make it look like a sidekick and throw a hook kick and throw a round kick. You know what I mean? So they don't know what's yeah. coming. It's funny because I fought a guy named Johnny Hendricks. And I remember that in that fight, I, I'm not, this dude was, he was former welterweight champ, knocking dudes out. He was, he's, you know, he's a, a college wrestler at a high level. And it was my first, my second main event. I was probably the most scared preparing for this fight that I have ever been fighting anybody. And um, yeah. it's funny because in that first round, I frustrated him so much. I hit him with a sidekick, boom, and kind of knocked him back several steps. <laughs> and then I faked the sidekick. And he brought his arms down because he thought I was going to throw it. And I flicked it up and I smoked him in the head with a round mm -hmm. kick. And I see him just drop his hands and roll his eyes. That's when I knew I had him. I said, like, I got you. Yeah. You know, I frustrated you so much. You pretty much given up. It's just, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And yeah. when I throw the lead legs, and I did, I do tutor, uh, uh, tutorial on that. So check out my, my YouTube okay. channel, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I have a lot yeah, of yeah. tagging Tuesdays and breakdowns. Check it okay. out, bro. Thick. Okay, so, I will for sure. I'll I post it on the leg. I yeah, I saw it. Like yeah, I you watched know? it yesterday. I saw too. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, heck yeah, dude. Let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we? Uh, why don't we get okay. a moment? We'll share that. We'll share that on our on our channels. Oh, I it's, appreciate that. Hey, yeah, let's yeah go. for sure. So my second question is, what made what made you become what made you want to become a coach and create a YouTube channel with it? Well, teaching. I number one. It was, I, I hated teaching when I first started, right? Uh, I, I pretty much grew up here at the gym at Upstate Karate, at my dad's gym. I grew up here. I was here every day. I lived here. Even though I, when I was a kid, I hated it at the time. But I thank my dad every day for keeping me in it. And it, and it was the, the teaching aspect is what I love. Because when you're serving others and helping others and you, and you see the growth that they go through and you see them becoming a, a better human being, I had something to do with that. That's number one. Number Facts. two, I didn't become the fighter I am today until I started teaching. Because nice. whenever you Facts. teach a technique, you can see it and you can do a technique, but you don't really understand it. You just know how to do it, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you have to break a technique down to be able to teach it to kids, you start to understand the philosophy of that technique. You start to yeah. understand the mechanics of that technique a lot better, which become you become a better fighter in, in, in doing so. Nice. Yeah. nice. So if even even if it, if you have a brother, a cousin, uh, in, anybody that you can kind of break things down, different techniques and, and teach the art that you love anyway, you become yeah. your, your, your skill level grows, man, grows. It's funny. There's Thanks. a lot of high level competitive black belt jujitsu practitioners out there in the world. And they don't they don't get good at training with other black belts. They get good at training with their white belts and their blue belts, like the guys yeah. that are under them, because okay. they can slow things down. Because they can, they can teach it. They can uh, they understand sense. the techniques better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Facts. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, okay. sir. Crazy okay. legs, okay. baby. That's like the best yeah, thing. Yeah. You know you were kicking. It is. Crazy legs. <laughs> I already know. We are. I love kicking people. It brings joy to me. Like I love kicking people in. too. We got that. We yeah. got that together, brother. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Get a nice leg kick and watching him win. It's like, yeah. I'm like, you, you felt that. You felt that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> good, oh, it's, it's the best. It's the best. Crazy. Okay, did you so have my another last, question? Yeah, yeah. Of course. My last question is: So I know you've done a couple of breakdowns for our fights. Um, have you watched any other fights besides the ones that you uh, that you booked down, or is just those? Um, yeah, there there are some that I like. The, the there are some that I like. Like who I watch. The guys that I like to watch are the ones that I I feel have some martial arts training, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, because you know they're they're the type of person that loves this so much that they've actually got some training and to be able to go out there and do what they do. Yeah, and the guys that you can tell who has made this a lifestyle and who hasn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Guys who yeah. just go out there just because they want to hit somebody and scrap. Yeah. But there are some guys that I see, if, if even if they don't train at a gym, they've done something at home. They, they take it so seriously that they've watched, they've watched tutorials. They've watched MMA fights. They've watched. It's funny. I've seen, I've had guys come in here who have never trained before in their life. But they love the fight game so fight game so much that they've studied, they've watched UFC, and believe it or not, yeah. they they some of the best fighters in the world have watched. They watch anime. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they have to. Yeah, they watch anime because it, it's it's such a detail and such a um, there's a finesse to how you watch anime fight scenes, right? My dad calls yeah. cartoons. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, it's not cartoons, man. Mm. It's anime. Get it right. He's like, man, you're the only one watching cartoons. I'm like, stop. It's anime. Shut up. You know? But no, no. It's that they, even though they, they're they not at a gym every day, maybe they can't afford it, but they but they love the game so much that they've learned how to do it outside of that. And, and, and they've got some skill. You know what I'm saying? I think that's honorable, man. That's so freaking cool that they love the game so much that they've, They've learned off of watching fights and watching watching Street Beach Scrap Bar, watching, you know, yeah. UFC and, and things like that. So those are the guys I like to watch. What the guys that, that have a little, that have finesse to them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's well, I, and that's and that's well, and that's part well, of the reason why I started watching uh Street Beefs in the first place, because it gave opportunities to those guys, like you said, straight off the couch that yeah. just want to test themselves. Yeah. And then there's guys that actually been you know training in in their garage or doing little side things to really get ready for this test and and then yeah. really you know what I'm saying compete at a level that you would you would be surprised that you know to know that they only trained in their garage or they did it in their in their living room you know and and and, and you can see real funny because it also gives those guys who think they are something until they get punched in the mouth. Yeah. 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 And yeah. let them know. And you see it in the scrapyard. You see their, you yes. see their mindset change. M yes. Maybe hey, I don't want to do him. this. I don't want to get out of here. You know, <laughs> running my Maybe mouth. I wasn't yeah. ready for this. If, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, if I was freaking president, I would make everybody have at least one fight. Yes. Yeah. yeah there of would course. not be as much crap talk because there's so many people talking crap out there. Yeah. They've never been punched in the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, and we if you just never went over punch in the mouth, you'll think twice about running that mouth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're right. You're right. So, yeah. It gives those guys an opportunity who want to be a fighter to go out there and do it. But also at the other end, guys who think they can do it and they think they're yeah. this and they're that until they get punched in the mouth. But it's very, yeah. it's very few people out there, very small percentage. It takes kahunas to step out there and scrap with somebody. Knowing that yeah, the fact the cost is trying to cause you pain. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. 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 You gotta have some some kahunas to be able to step out there yeah. and, and respect, you know? Right on, yeah. right on. But Wonder Boy, we now have on Viking yeah. Warrior with us, who's uh one of our fighters. He's actually a champion, and he had uh he had some questions as well. So there's uh we're trying to keep ourselves to a to everybody getting their questions in. No worries, no worries. <laughs> I appreciate the questions, Crazy Legs, by the way. Viking, <laughs> let me hear it, my man. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'm Viking Warrior. Nice to meet you, Mr. Thompson. And um, yeah, man, you know, uh, Vi yeah, Crazy Legs is is a hell of a fighter, man. I seen him when he first started. He didn't really know much about the sport. He was one of them guys we talking about right now. 
And uh, he he definitely he definitely My pushed heart. himself. He started. He joined our gym. We had a gym at a time in Olympia, uh, TFW training for warriors in Olympia. And uh, he joined us. And then, man, you know, he took it from there and, and started doing his own yeah. thing. And now he's the fighter he is. And uh, I'm really proud of him. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing this for about 15 years. I started with karate, too. And I noticed that <laughs> you have that karate base. And I liked how you mentioned that uh, because it, it reminded me of uh, Michael J. White. Remember? Yeah. Because he has... He fights the same way as you, you know what I'm saying? And that's his his base because that that lead kick, that lead kick is just vicious, man. You know what I'm saying? Dude, that lead leg just White, can man. do many things. Yeah, he's a movie star, but that dude's a legit, legit. Yeah, I was he, going to ask you about him. Yeah, I was going to ask you if he, that's one of my questions. Have you ever trained with him? And do you know what I'm saying? Do you know him personally? So I, I've, I've met him uh, several times. Very respectful guy. Very respectful. Nice. Yeah. But I've known guys that know him and know him, know him. Right. And yeah. they said, that's a dangerous dude. That, that, that guy. Yeah. Yes, he's a movie you star. could tell. Yes. The guy stays in shade. The dude shredding, but he's a lifelong martial artist and guys who. Martial artist. Yeah. Is that, man, the dude is so athletic, man. I've seen some of his old karate films in the past. The dude. Yes. Like, yeah. Me too. For his and whole life. He's been doing his whole life just like you. Dude, yeah. Jaw yeah. So, <laughs> hands down, hands down. He's it's just the le the lead hand. It, all he needs is the lead hand and the lead leg. It's over. Yeah. You know. Dude, that's it. I don't know if you saw that break hand down he did about no telegraph with um. Yeah. Kimbo Slice. Kimbo. With Kimbo yeah. Slice. Yeah. 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 But he understands it. He's known. It. He's done it so long. He understands the fight game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You could tell. He's just so yeah. smooth about it. He's like, I'll smack you in the face like eh, two seconds. <laughs> Boom! Like he's just so smooth with it. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know how old he is, but I wouldn't want to mess with if I saw him on the street, I'm walking the other way, man. Not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but I but but would you love to train with him one day? Oh, I'd love to train with him. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'd love to train I with would him. too. Old school karate guy. I, I remember watching him yeah. in the in, uh, I think it was Universal Soldiers too. Nice, yeah. His, like, Spawn was my Soldiers. favorite. Which Spawn which was, was my Spawn? favorite. Oh, Spawn. Spawn, yeah. I love Spawn. But classic. I saw him at Universal classic. Soldiers too, and I was like, dude, who was this dude, man? He was so quick. He kicked awesome technique. Yeah, this guy's awesome. Been watching him ever since. Natural. Facts. Yeah, man, no worries, bum. Hey, crazy legs. Hey, but uh, my third, right. my third question, my third question, since uh, yeah, so I was gonna ask, uh, what got you into MMA from a karate kickboxing background? But you basically answered that by training with those guys, you know. Yeah, man, I, I, you know, the karate's my base. I still train karate every day, but. You know, I, I, as a kid, I did like the point fighting tournaments and stuff, but I kept getting disqualified, you know, for hitting too hard. My dad, he competed mostly in, in, in kickboxing, but back in the day he did karate, he did point fighting, but it was called hard point. It was full contact, but it was still a point system, right? Um, but he switched over to kickboxing and I started my full contact training at age 12, had my first fight when I was 15 obviously did the kickboxing thing and I ended up tearing every ligament in my left leg, every ligament. I was out for three years, had numerous surgeries on my leg. And in that time that I was out, that's when I started doing the training with GSP and fell in love with number one, the dudes that, that, that I was trained with GSP, the coolest guy you've ever met in your life. He's the goat in my eyes. Yeah. Cause he's good in the cage and he's a good, He's a good martial artist and, and gentleman outside of the cage as well. Yeah. But through GSP, GSP told Rashad Evans about me. So I came in to simulate Leo Tomachita. I, I trained with Anderson Silva, Chris Weidman, Nate Marquardt. So I'm like, man, I'm training with all these champions. Why not switch to MMA? You know what I mean? It was it was getting becoming more popular than kickboxing, you know? And to be the best, I always want to be the best. And yeah. to be the best, that's what I, that's kind of the route I I, I took. So just to be able to go out there and show people that karate works as well. Because a lot of times, for years, karate was looked down upon. There's a lot of McDojo yeah. schools out there that made us karate guys look bad, like it didn't work, you know? But realistically, the real karate stuff 
it freaking works, man. So, yeah, man, that's why I fell in love with it, bud. Right on. Right on. Facts. I love it. I, it see, my, my, I'm a karate base. I started with Shogun Karate. Oh, when yeah. I was eight to eight to eleven, I was uh I ended up quitting when I was uh brown uh red belt three strikes because I went for my kata for my brown belt and I got beat out by two Asian guys that was only there for like a year and I was there for yeah. three years and I'm yeah. like man this Come is some bull crap yeah. but <laughs> you know it, I realized this because I didn't put my all into learning my katas yeah. and trying to you know improve in that area you know I was more yeah trying to break boards. I was trying to break boards, showing off my kicks and doing my, my own thing, you know, yeah. and getting what I wanted out of it, you know, which which improved my fighting skills, which, you know, I was able to show later on. But at the time, you know, it was something that, that definitely I agree that I did, you know, because I loved it. And I yeah. still love it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's funny you said that because there was a point in my life where the same thing happened to me. I was testing for my, oh man, I was testing for a junior black belt. You know, I was like under 18. So like yeah. But was goofing off, man. I remember my dad coming up in front of everybody, like head slaps me in front of everybody. Boom, smokes me and told me and, and failed me right in the, then and there, like in front of everybody. I got, I say, you know, he's my son, but I don't give a crap. Like he ain't doing the right thing. Get out of here, dude. Kicked yeah. my butt when I got home. Yeah. Dude. But hey, you yeah, appreciate man, I'm glad that you're now. Still at it, though. That's how. I, yeah, it made you into a tougher dude, but I bet you you hated it for a while. You didn't want to go back, huh? Nope, sure didn't. Sure, my dad kicked. That's how it is with my son. Go. He's like, "You're gonna get out there and train. Mm -hmm. You're gonna fight me when I get home." I'm like, "I'm going to take class." <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. That, that's how it is with my son sometimes, because you know he he been fighting for his whole life. You know, since he was basically one years old, he was. He'd been fighting and he'd been in the gym, his, you know, since he was five, you know. Yeah. So Dude, at I'm the end of the day, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's in him. Got, you know, he just runners. doesn't like the hard training part. That's okay. He doesn't like the hard training part, you know. Let that's him do things that's what most like. kids that are skilled, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You know I, but you I, know I, how it is being a skilled yeah, yeah. competitor yourself. Yep. You know, it, that training thing is, is something we don't really want to do. It's not, man, because it's uncomfortable, man. Nobody likes to do things they don't like or, or, yeah. or not good at. You're not good at it yet, mm -hmm. but you will be. But it was mandatory in our house. I got two brothers and two sisters. It was mandatory in our household un until we got to an age where my where my my dad thought we could make decisions decisions for ourselves. It was like you know, 17, 18 years old, and we could stop. But when we were living in his house, yeah, it was mandatory that we were training. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, because when we left the nest. My parents wanted to, you know, wanted to know, be confident that we could take care of ourselves if we had to. Facts. You know? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. man, uh, I got a, I got somebody that he's been begging me and he wants to just briefly jump on here. Now you broke down one of his videos and um, he's the biggest fan of yours in the world, but it's, it's high speed. And uh, oh, let's go. <laughs> What's up? High speed. Oh my gosh. My man. Even Wonder dude. Boy Thompson. <laughs> Uh, hey man, that was a solid fight. Dude. I, you know, that was solid, man. You, you were freaking awesome. You know, sir, it means a lot. It means a lot. <laughs> you know, anytime. Are you still so doing from, it? You still training or anything? You still, you still well, active? So, sir, to be completely honest with you, just to kind of go back to what you said, for the people who just get up off the couch and go do something like to go fight, that's pretty much all I ever did was just get up off the couch and said, you know what, this is monthly. I'm just going to go and see what happens. First I'd thing train. first, if that's how it went, you look like you have, you've had some training, man, some wrestling, some boxing or yeah. something. Well, so again, going back to what else, another thing you said was YouTube tutorials really go a long way. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned off of, no uh, way. I think Shane from Fight Tips, he, yeah. shout out to that guy. And uh, when I was a kid or well, when I was in high school, freshman, I had a lot of pent up aggression and so i didn't have a punching bag so what i did was i buried a two by eight like in the ground like a 10 foot two by eight and then i wrapped some cordage around it that i had laying around from one of my dad's job sites and i used to just punch it and watch it fling back and forth and i didn't know that was an actual thing called the makiwara yeah. yeah and that's how i did it i just kicked it all day and punched it all day and then did that every day of 
ever since I got older and then i went to street beefs and said this Hard, is it hardened you up i got two maquiweras out there in the gym right now that i still work on every day so that's cool wow. that you did that and didn't even know it mm, yeah so well, that's breaking breaking your fight down i literally thought you had some some martial arts experience besides the youtube thing you know i thought you were actually at a gym or something well but so shane phase is my guy i love that dude kind of kind of i i was going to a gym for like two months and that was it yeah. Like I, I tried and they were like, how long have you been training? And I said, dude, I don't, I don't train like this. Usually you're my first gym. And they offered me to go do a smoker. And then I told them that because of work, I couldn't do it. And then they kind yeah. of turned me down. So then I went back to just doing the, like, I'll just won't do it. Won't take it serious. And then I found street beefs. And then I said, well, I'm just going to go do it there. So let's go. man. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Just go out That's there. Awesome. You know what? I'm just going to give it a shot. Let's go. Mm -hmm. that's awesome man. so i only got i only got two questions for you that's it Hit and then me. i won't i won't take it because of time um why my fights why why like crazy legs he has a way different skill set he is i would say he's way better than me he yeah. will throw spinning oh. back kicks something i won't do i i got he'll throw spinning back kicks he'll you know just straight up i, I think i brought somebody to the fight and then he like straight up <laughs> like, like, three pieced them you know what i'm talking about <laughs> and then you got Viking, and then you got Viking Warrior. You know somebody who stepped toe to toe with somebody who knocked me out, gave me my gave me my first L. You know, like went toe to toe with him, and then you know just uh, like pretty much stood up to a legend. You know, yeah, yeah. Like it. it well, the it, thing I, is, I am really humbled for it. You know, yeah. The, the, the thing is, you know, I get a lot of people on my on my um, my YouTube, my Instagram that that will throw options out there. So there was somebody out there who you must have hit, you know, not really actually hit, but <laughs> inspired or something. Cause they, they gave me, they gave me your fight. So I was like, dude, I'll check this thing out. And it, and it, and it went, it was like, you know, it wasn't one of those one hitter quitter knockouts. Cause then it would, I wouldn't be able to break it down. You know what I mean? There's one but, of those like, too. There's, there's one like that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it was one of those things that, you know, um, one of the one of the things that I that I said I, I like to watch I like to watch these guys who, who who you know who never really trained before in their life but actually go out there and look like they have some skill and move around um, and it was an, it was an exciting fight it was such a back and forth you know thing that I thought more people should watch it so that, that's why I broke it down more people should tune into that so I'll be checking crazy legs out because if he's if he if he's a crazy kicker like y'all said he is. I'm excited, dude. Viking no, YouTube, bro. 15 hey. years. I'm, I'm going to be breaking y'all down. I'll send you Viking a suggestion. Warriors, Thank you, bro. Yeah. I <laughs> hope you send you a suggestion, man. Because Crazy Legs, he, he really, that, like, I, I thought I was good at kicking. I'm just really good at just I throwing a shot and then just, like, not caring about the repercussions of what my things yeah. will feel like. Crazy Legs, are, I bet, are you smiling like that when you fight? Because you have not stopped smiling <laughs> yeah. since I've been on <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. enjoy fighting like a lot of people fight for anger, like I fight for enjoyment. It's been story. Dude, that's yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the like same a good way. fight, a good match. Like, I'm I'm excited. I'm nervous, but like I'm happy for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's really <laughs> you know, like you're all my fights, I'm smiling. Sure. Like it's fun. Heck yeah, man. Well, listen, guys, it's almost like eleven something. I think it's past eleven here. I gotta okay. get up early in the morning yeah. for some training. Is that okay? Um I I yes, wanted sir. to I've been waiting yeah, a while. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll make it up. really quick yes, if, that's, if that's okay. Firecracker, hit me with it, brother. <laughs> Fire chicken. Fire chicken, yes, sir. Fire chicken. So, yes, sir. Um, first off, man, I, I really liked what you did with the collaboration on Kentucky Ballistics. Like, I watched that show with my son, and <laughs> to see you come on there with the heavy bags and um, try out the different firearms. Like that was a really cool blending of two different YouTube channels. So Fire Chicken, I don't know if did you see the one where the the fifty cow blew up in his face? Yes, yes, dude. I was literally there like a week before shooting the exact same same rifle, man. It was nuts. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, oh my. So after that it happened, and he got out of the hospital. Obviously, nobody knew what was going on because obviously it blew up in his face. But he ended up getting in touch with us and you know we we stayed in touch with him literally the entire time he was in the hospital just making sure he was all right but that was 
the craziest thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. That's cool. I got to tell him. I got to tell my buddy that you you like watching his channel, man. Oh, man. I'm a big fan. Just stick a thumb in it, man. Yeah, like, dude. He just stuck a thumb in his neck. Dude. <laughs> um, crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that, that was really awesome to see you on there again. Um, by, by the way, uh, um, I'm the one that's been talking to you on, on Instagram. So yes, Fire sir. Chicken, I, I started Street Beef Scrapyard about four years ago, and I started it after a trip over to Virginia to the main branch and um, doing a couple fights over there. Been fighting since, I training since like 2004, MMA, um, boxing, a lot of jujitsu stuff. So been in combat sports like a while. Yes, but um, yeah, so um, I, my question is, uh, how how did you originally find us? Was it just kind of scrolling through Instagram or what? What do you mean, dude? This thing is everywhere. <laughs> okay. Street V Scrapyard. When I pulled up, uh, dude, everybody at the gym, at my gym talks about it. You know, everybody in the MMA world talk about, they, they talk about Street View Scrapyard. I, I, I swear. Really? I mean, I got professional, my buddy Chris nice. Weidman, who's the former middleweight champion, fought two weeks ago. <laughs> no, Chris He's Weidman watching is. you guys. Like, you don't understand um, how many professionals, amateur MMA guys uh, love this freaking channel, man. The characters wow. that it brings, like the big dude with the karate gi, head kicking dudes in the face. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't remember the guy's name. He's the big guy, and he wore like the Shinigami. karate. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Like what? Shout out you know? to him. And and, and uh, there was one guy who actually shouted me out. He's like, uh, because he watched my tutorials on YouTube. I, I don't remember his name. He's like, you know, shout out Wonder Boy. You're so that, awesome. that Blackie awesome. Jam? Say what? Uh, Blackie Jam. Yeah, I, I think that's who. That Blackie Jam. Man. Yeah. And so I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, check this out. So yeah. it was a combination of seeing it on my YouTube channel, seeing it on my Instagram and having my buddies talk about it. Okay. Nice. That's, that's, I mean, this is still a shocker to me that it's getting out to so many people and people like yourself are seeing it. You know, I, I tell the fighters all the time. I said, you guys have no idea who is watching you fight right now. It, Mighty it, Mouse it, watches anybody. these guys. He, you know, yes, he's local. He, oh, I um, didn't know that. But he breaks you guys down all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, another question was, is this something that you would ever maybe like watch in person or? Oh, my gosh. I knew it was coming. Heck <laughs> yeah, bro. Are you kidding me? I would love to. I would love to come down and Let's go. watch one live, man. Wow. We love know, I got to be cage side, dude. I got to be like right in the thick of it, like it. I want my, you know, my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got to feel the fit. Let's, let's, let's get him in. Let's get him in as an honorary uh, ref. a referee. Announcer, <laughs> oh, announcer <laughs> fight, dude. Like yeah. I would let you so, take the mic and not literally mic, but you could announce the fight. Yeah, that'd be. Dude, I would love to announce the fight. Me and my bro Sweet T. Um, my I don't know if you know my brother Sweet T. Um, you know he's he's a lifelong martial artist. Fought some kickboxing. This dude has more talent in his pinky than I will ever have. Just doesn't want to compete. But we have talked about headed down. The thing is, uh, you know, the, the schedule here is just ridiculous with with teaching classes every day. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. training on top of that. We got we got guys, fighters that have fights coming up. So they help me get ready for my fight. I help them get ready for their fight. But uh, dude, that's that's the top of the list, man. That's like no. that would be freaking sick. Wonder Boy, we got an event coming up in July, which is our our four uh, year anniversary. Anniversary. We would love to have you come where, out. Where, okay, okay. Let's July. Meet. Let me know. Give me the dates. Give me the dates, and, and we'll see if we can make it out there to it. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Seven twenty. We love to have you. you. We really appreciate you for coming on the show, and we thank you for your presence. We honor you and all of your accomplishments. We want to continue to support you. And I'm speaking for all of the scrapyard, for all of the street beats, Virginia and West Coast. I know they appreciate that you guys watch them as well. Um, and it's not just the scrapyard. We have a huge family of people that are involved in this thing. And you're actually on heart and fight. So we wanted to, you know, also shut shot them out and say thank you for them as well. So we appreciate you. We love you. And we hope that you continue to just do good things. Keep thriving. Keep shooting for the youth. Thank you, my friend. Guys, I appreciate it. Uh, fire chicken, high speed, crazy legs, Viking warrior, all you guys, man. I really do appreciate it. everybody watching. 
Even yeah. though I'll probably never laugh with you or cry with you, I love you. So keep training hard I, and, and keep putting on good fights, baby. Appreciate you guys. Yes, we appreciate, appreciate you, too. Thank you so yeah. much. Yes, sir. Bye -bye. Thanks, boss. Yeah, that was good. awesome. Have a good night. I got to go to hey, bed. Hey, it's nice you. Have nice a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, See, good, yeah. waiting, waiting paid off. We, we, we yeah. made it, and yeah. it was we a long episode, but it was worth it. Um, it was. Yeah. It was awesome. Thanks I, I for think Diesel was... and Hard to Fight for letting us stay on for this long. You know, I yeah, thanks, guys. Sure we appreciate that. Thank you, I thought Diesel. it was really cool that we had our Diesel. Thanks. Uh, be able to be on. I mean, not not that you weren't on, on on all the episodes, but being that you do have this kicking, uh, kickboxing background, and have someone who does the same thing and start off in that same realm, I think it's pretty inspiring to have the two of you and you have that opportunity to to meet the guy. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I think yeah, that's pretty cool. Really and I see, like I got some videos, got some videos because I need to watch. Like he's a cool so guy. Go watch that last one that he was talking about the sidekick that it was like his three favorite kicks. I posted up there. I watched, I watched it a few times already, but like he did some really good tutorials. Um, might okay. be something you can add your arsenal in there. Yeah, right I'll check him out for sure. And that's really cool that he had a breakdown of, of high speed. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. So, I mean, he's once got, you started bringing high speed on, I was like, what? And then that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, yeah high speed was like, I want to come on. And I was like, you got to be quick. And it's like, I knew we were kind of pushing him on time a little bit because, you know, we had him on for a while, but I mean, just so, so nice of him to, to, you know, give his time like that. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm glad that high speed, you know, big fan of him that he was able to get on and, and meet him and um, uh, ask a couple questions. So yeah, um, great, great episode guys. Jeez. It was, it was, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, um Let's let's hit something really quick. Um, we got it. We got to do our mental health. So uh, really quick, I, I want to say something. I'm sorry if I cut you cut in front of you. If you were going to mention this, but you know, it's it's almost the one year anniversary the passing of Jay Gautam, and I just wanted to say, like, I can't believe it's already been that long, and and it uh, it's just more reason why we need to be there for each other, and why this community is so important, and why we need to do everything possible to keep this community together and and to, and uh and just keep moving forward you know yeah yeah you know to tap on yeah. mental health i didn't want to say too much about it today um other than you know just getting out the fact that the haters are going to hate topic came up but at the end of the day um you're correct i think it's so important to always tap into the mental health piece of it because we're always dealing with things and it's never going to end um but I think it was really cool also to see the inspirational moments in this episode where we got to see High Speed talk about how he got up off the couch. And if there's guys out there that need to get up off the couch, you see that it's possible. You see that you can come on and you can do great things. Uh, having uh, Stephen Wonderboy on um, Thompson, also a huge inspiration for the youth. There's so many young people yeah. out there, 17 and 18, that are getting ready to get to that next level. And they really don't have someone directing their path. And we want to be that. And so if you're out there, guys, and you're on that on that cusp of just making age and you don't know what to do and you want to be a part of something, reach out to us, uh, Street Beef Scrapyard. Um, Scrapyardfighting at gmail.com or hit us up on Instagram. There, there's lots of ways to get a hold of us. So um, I try my best to answer messages. And I apologize yeah. if, I, if I don't. But um, I do try my best. Uh, someone asked me earlier how to get in contact with me. I do have a Facebook. I don't do other social medias. I'm pretty close down to Instagram and Twitters and things like that. But uh, if you really wanted to uh, just get in contact with me, just shoot me a messenger, a message on Messenger, uh, Facebook Messenger, and I'll, I'll respond to that. It's actually Leonard B. Hicks um, on, on Facebook. But other than that, that's that's the only way that you can get in contact with me. And then I'll share personal contact with you if you want to do it to that route. Um, but I think that also goes for Crazy Legs. If anybody wants to reach out to Crazy Legs and get any advice from him, Viking Warrior and Steve uh, Fire Chicken of our of our home branch. Um, but we appreciate all of you guys, all the guests. Steve, thank you so much. Crazy Legs, thank you so much. Heart in the fight, Daniel, Diesel, yeah. uh, all you guys. We, we appreciate, appreciate all you guys. Your 
Yep. Let's end it. <laughs> I like the hand. God damn it, Dizo. Cut.